Hello, welcome. It's Hard Lord Time. How are you, Bo? I'm doing so well. It's so good to see you. You too. Are you ready for a classic? I am. This is one that we've had in the tank. Oh, we've been we've been dying. We've been ready. Yeah, we've been ready for this one. Um, honestly, these are our favorite ones to do because you know we learn about each other through these, mm-hmm. and you know we're do, to, we're talking about our picks, our personal picks for perfect EPs slash seven inches, whatever that may mean. Not demos. No demos, and you know what? I didn't do any splits either. I did one split, but okay. it's a gimme. Um, so, you know, I just want to preface this with something. Yeah. We we fell into this role as the guys that are putting you onto stuff, you know? Mm. We don't claim to be any kind of authority on what makes these things good Mm-mm. or you having to like them. No. These are just, just, just the stuff we like mm-hmm. as the hosts of this program. And what's fun, I, I don't know, if when you were compiling your list, I found it was really easy because they're so short that it's just like, yeah, this f***ing rocks. So here was my challenge for myself, Bo. I didn't tell you this yet. Okay. I didn't look up a single thing. Oh, really? I My challenge to myself for this one was top of my head. Interesting. So EPs I can th- think of that I think are amazing. I had a couple surprises because some of them are considered EPs when I would have thought they were LPs and then the inverse. So See, I just want, I didn't want is, some yokel in the fucking comment section being like, actually, that's a full length. That's a, a long. See, I feel that way about things, though. I, I'm with like, you. But if it says like EP, I, I, I just put cogs. a couple picks in mind that I could also argue are LPs. Okay. You know? Yeah. One, I, I'm sure we have a couple crossover, and yeah. one, oh. I was like, what? And it became an immediate, like, well, that's going on the list. Like, mm. I can't, I would have, it would have been a go-to. So you posted a tweet about this topic and said that it's a lost art. And it I think is. that that's actually a really important thing. And here, there's reasons behind that, because A... It co- for labels, yep. it costs the same amount of money. Basically, it's a negligible amount between a seven inch and a twelve inch. So why spend the same amount of money for something that can a fit more songs, right? B more beautifully display the gorgeous packaging, right? But I do think, and and here's the perils of an EP: they, they get forgotten. Yeah. They get lost amongst the discography. If the songs don't get re-recorded or put on something else or bonus tracks on something, if they if those songs are just dedicated EP songs, yeah, it's kind of assumed that they're like lesser material. Dude, good point. Valid point. And there was a time in the early 2000s, at least when when I was actively started and like got into hardcore, where like that mm-hmm. wasn't the case, where it was like, right. like stop and think, put two demos together. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it was like a, a full length. It was almost like a full length was like daunting. Like it was too much or something. I would say in the two thousands. Yeah. The seven inch was always better than the LP. King. And that's it probably went, it why went amazing demo, perfect seven inch, pretty good LP. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why you know, that, probably why I'm so partial to EPs and seven inches. I love yeah. a seven inch. It's for hardcore music. It's hard to argue that a seven inch or an EP isn't the perfect way to digest this form of music. Uh, yeah. Like four or five great songs yeah. of heart, four or five great hardcore songs is crazy. And sometimes way more. Seven or eight perfect hardcore that songs. That are like, and the, the whole thing, I, I don't want to spoil, but one of mine, yeah, I yeah. couldn't believe the length of time. Yeah. And it's okay. Let's get into Let's it. Get into Let's it. get into it. What's yeah. your first pick? My first pick. Should I go? I'm going to just going to go with a classic. It's the minor threat. Uh, so that's filler. It's filler, right? Yeah, yeah. There's filler. two. There's two EPs for minor threat. Technically, this is not an original. This is the recent Discord repress and the the first six. But it's like true to like how it was made and everything. We got filler. I don't want to hear it. Seeing red, straight edge, yeah, straight edge. Right. Yeah. Small man, big mouth, screaming at a wall, bottle violence, and minor threat. So 1981. I know that I'm like the. Spin kick 25 to life guy on yeah, the show, yeah. you know, but I, these are, this is, this is what it's all about. Dude, I mean, this 1981, mm-hmm. 
It's fucking- That's the same year as fucking Discharge EP, which influenced everything, you know? Yeah. It, and it, Straight Edge, dude. Uh, yeah, Straight Edge is on there. I'd be dead without, I'd be literally dead without this thing. I'd be in Connecticut, <laughs> passed out, dead. It says, here's, and here's an important part, something we talk about all the, all the time, the liner notes. It says, thanks to Henry, Skip, Don, Nathan, Dodie, Richard, and the Bad Brains. There it is. There and it then is. you go, who are the Bad Brains? Who are the Bad Brains? <laughs> Boom. Yeah. There you go. And that's why I want to do this one first is because, and, and for me, this was one of the first, I've talked about this before. Blink-182 had a home video, a VHS, mm. and Tom DeLonge just rattles off a bunch of bands that he liked growing up, and Minor Threat was one of them that stuck in my head. Mm. This was one of the first, and then finding out that they were part of the straight edge, or the straight yeah. edge thing, there you go. You know, it was all. So they were not a formative thing for me at all. They were very, very. Because then I there found was, Earth Crisis long before yeah, I found Minor Threat. Which is, I think <laughs> that know? that's the cool yin yang of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was I was into skateboarding and and like pop punk essentially at the time. Yeah. Found this and it all clicked. And I, you know, going back to that and being like, okay, what what is this Minor Threat band that the singer of Pressure keeps talking about? You know, uh -huh. I got to check them out. Uh-huh. And then, and then it all made sense to me. And now I, I celebrate the dis out of step dude in my eyes. Unbelievable. I celebrate it all. Unbelievable. And, and true, true DIY. Discord, yeah. Discord 01. Two, I mean, and like carried that philosophy to this day. Oh, I'm sorry. Discord 03, 03. Cause teen idols yeah. was first something else. And then this unbelievable. Yeah. Huge. Did they all wait? Are you said they have two EPs? Yeah, the Salad Days, Salad Days EP is another one. Is are in my eyes and out of step? Not that's EPs? on. That is on out of step, which I believe okay. is an LP. And this is where we get into the kind of the quagmire. This is the, this, yeah. this is, is going to happen. Yes. It's like what's an EP? What's and, an LP? And that's the fun part. And I could be totally wrong about stuff. I'm literally only going on what's on Discogs. So if Discogs is wrong, right. you know, sure. I'm going to be wrong about stuff yes. because again, I did this off top. We did this in 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. My, my first pick, Bo. Yes, sir. 25 to life. Keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> you you all laugh, you all smirk, you all wince, but man, these are, there's a reason mm. You look up old 25 to life flyers and stuff. It was like 25 to life, big font, top of the flyer. Hate breed, Marauder, Mad Ball. Which, is, word, which you know? is crazy. It's crazy. Ran shit. But maybe Rick made those flyers. That is possible. <laughs> <laughs> but also, dude, why is it a game? Short fuse. These are these are perfect hardcore songs. Okay, so I also wanted to to ask you before I should have asked before we did this, but you're going to mention bands that have been on our underrated bands and best breakdown yeah. playlists. Okay, good. I did too. I just yeah, I think this is this is a it's different, different conversation, total these different just, thing. Absolutely. And I think a lot of the time, some of these EPs are the best things these bands ever wrote. No, and I think that's an important thing to no argument to clarify. And I think keeping it real is, it was tough. It was a toss up between keeping it real and strength or unity, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but I went with keeping it real. Obviously. The production, the riffs, the lyrics, fucking, this is what, I, this is, this like, is one of those things that established, you know, what I like. Interesting. Truly, the, the dichotomy of hard lore is. Minor threat and 25 to life, first two picks. <laughs> first two picks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to try. I have, I did, I did some work, so I'm going to actually try to go in chronological order. Wow. So I started in 81 discord 03 minor threat. You're awesome. And now I'm going to go to something that we've talked about. I wish I had negative approach by negative approach. Touch and go 07, 1982. Damn dude. 82. They were banned for three fucking years, Bo. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I have. I should have grabbed the anthology. I have like the, you know, the the whole thing, whatever. But uh, we'll get to, I'll get to another band. I had a revelation about one of my favorite bands of all time on this list, and we'll get there. Okay. But they cover sure. Ready to Fight. Mm -hmm. And when you have, it, it's just like this thing where it's like 10 years later, one of the hardest bands of all time. I'm kind of going out of order here. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is the reverence shown to this release yeah. by every band that came afterwards. 
This is now the third time. This is like the third week in a row we said that negative approach completely transformed the scene that created the most popular type of hardcore. We were going to talk to Brandon at Tied Down. And yeah. when we we do a thing where we'll, we'll, we'll talk to each other, you and I, and be like, what are we going to talk about? And <laughs> your suggestion was, how does it feel to have invented an entire genre of music? Because yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. what it you did. You made this. That's what it did. And he's like, I don't give a fuck, man. My cell phone doesn't have any minutes right now. Yeah. What's the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> And I go, damn, you're the coolest guy ever. So negative approach. Uh, yeah, the coolest man ever. So there's cool. no cold as life without negative approach. There's probably there's no there's many things that don't exist without negative approach. Yes. My next pick. This is a this is a uh, a really fun look into the duality oh, of the show. Yeah, here. yeah, I like it. Because my next pick is Kickback 150 Passions. Wow, that's an EP. So there you go. There's one I didn't oh, even yeah. didn't even think about. Yeah, and that's before No Surrender came out. You know what? To, I mean, really, Kickback's entire discography is like this rising chart oh. of just insanity. Yeah. Because Cornered is like a like breakdown 25 to life. Forever War, they go more kind of all at war. Yeah. Metallic. 150 Passions, they found, they were like, we're Kickback. Yeah. This is, this is our thing, 100%. We're not doing No this- Surrender is where shit popped off but this is uh this is to me the the, like defining piece of music for them of like the best european hardcore band of all time Mm. so this is go find this forever war is the song that gets most people because the big the 808 of course is it's unbelievable it's what you want but this is where they they found their identity and these sick fucks playing these unique riffs that sound like nothing else Mm -hmm. with this crazy production where you can't really hear the kick drum, but you can feel it. Oh, that's a, which is a weird choice, but works somehow. Interesting. I wouldn't have even, yeah, I've never noticed that. I've listened to it for sure, but I've never noticed crazy. This is, and like the guitars finally sound like the kickback guitars. Yeah. Yeah. It's when they stopped doing, like you said, all at war and started doing kickback. We're kickback. We're French, and we're the best one. Bonjour. <laughs> yeah. Um, next one for me. This is the one where I could not believe the length, hmm. and I think that this is one that like this was not formative to me growing up, getting in hardcore. But it was one where later on I, I went back and realized, and it's United Blood by Agnostic Front. <sighs> Nineteen eighty-three. This, this is way up there for me. Agnostic uh, yeah. Front Records. <laughs> Self-release, their own shit. United Blood, six minutes, 21 seconds. Yeah, it's Eight it's songs. like, that's it. They rip through this shit. It's fucking awesome. Um, I You know, I've seen bands cover this entire thing, and it's, it's a religious experience. I think, thing. I mean, it, they played they played the live at CB's set at United Blood one year, which I yeah, think is- Yeah, that was is, the coolest thing ever. Isn't that not all of United Blood? Don't they play the whole thing? I think uh, like like mostly, I believe. Yeah, most of it. So like, and seeing it at United Blood, yeah, with all the the Richmond locals, all the guys, all the guys who love, and then like all the Long Island fulfilling guys, fulfilling their genetic and geographic yeah. obligation yeah. to mosh for this entire thing. Yeah, as you said, a religious experience. A religious experience. Fucking yeah. This awesome. uh, if if it would be hard to argue that this isn't number one. You know, for me. Yeah, I you, when we get to the top five, so these are all not in order. Top five yeah. is just that's personal preference, formative yeah, yeah. for me. Same, yeah, good. But if somebody was like United Blood's the best hardcore EP of all time, I'm shrugging my shoulders and saying, "Hey, you might be right." Yeah, you're right. Good job. Good um, call. <laughs> groundbreaking, trailblazing, genre-defining EP. Hard, hard, like cool their lyrics. own, just like scratched yeah. out of the earth. I love it. So cool. Yeah, to me, this is like the defining thing for, like, the evolution of the the New York hardcore. There's a sound. lot of New York hardcore on my. It's technically New York hardcore. <laughs> my next pick. Okay, but it's Long Island. <laughs> okay, neglect. Pull uh, the plug. Ah. Uh, you want a real deal, sick fuck, act. The guy you listen to this, you know, they mean what they're saying. And again, a lot of the things I picked, nothing sounds like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And to me, that's part of 
what I'm looking for, for like why these things are perfect or why they impacted me in this way. I think from production standpoint, riff standpoint, lyrical standpoint, mm. sonically, the way his voice sounds, nothing sounds like this. And I think it's such an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. It's like the, it's an elite organization to be a neglect fan, you know? <laughs> Very much so. For me, for me to be the probably the, one of the the only guy outside of Long Island to have this in my office right now, framed, <laughs> framed. I've had that framed for fifteen years. Um, it's an elite organization to be a neglect fan, much like you know the Men in Black, etc. <laughs> Pull the plug. Other elite organizations and you know uh, 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 additional elite organizations. <laughs> neglect, and this is one of those things where pull the plug. I think is the best example of mm. their material like these four i think it's four songs again did not look shit up which is gonna bite my ass that's later. okay that's okay yeah this is uh they're they're in a pro in my on my long island on my long island <laughs> mount, mount rushmore <laughs> i didn't know they yeah. were long island yeah I knew they were in New York. Well, Didn't know. ask anybody from Long Island if they like neglect, they'll say yes and then shoot you in the head for asking. Why you know? Well, yeah. How could you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good answer. Again, more dichotomy between us. And this is Hit good because there's, hey, this is what's going to get people into things they may not have heard of. Yeah. So my next one um, is well, the first time where like I couldn't definitively find if it was or it wasn't. I believe it's an EP. It's, it was printed as a, a, by exclaim on a 12 inch, but at 45. Mm. And I can't definitively find if it's considered an EP or an LP. So I'm just going to say it because I, who cares really? Yeah. But a lot of dope shit is on for, or is 45 RPM. I love a 45 RPM. Fast. You, know? you can slow it down. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> you ever, you ever to me, the cool, the best things are when I put something on and it's 33, I'm kind of pissed. Cause you can't. Cause I'm like, damn, I gotta change my ribbon around for this mm. fucking piece of shit. Oh, you got a, you got one of them fancy turntables, huh? Well, you have a button or a I switch? Got a, or I got a little button. Oh, I got an Audio Technica I'm, like a mid range one. Okay, I've got a U turn kind of gangster one, but only because it has the built in preamp. So I needed that for my I, yeah, thing for the Sonos. <laughs> for the Sonos <laughs> thing, you need the built in preamp, Fuck yeah, or else you got to buy the fucking Sonos preamp. Don't get me started, <laughs> but dude, a, a, a 45 is, that's church, baby. Yeah. Um, it's not on my list, but when I first got one of the R and R seven inches, I didn't know if it was 45 right. or 33. I couldn't figure it out. We've talked about that. I was like, this is like, either, what does this sound like? Yeah. What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this one that I'm unsure about is DYS brotherhood on exclaim mm -hmm. from 1983. It's okay. short, but again, I couldn't. Uh, anywhere I looked, Google, Discogs, Wikipedia, couldn't figure it out. It's no secret that I love the early Boston stuff. DOIS mm -hmm. was my favorite of that stuff. Dave Smalley has like the first straight edge tattoo that I know of. And it says true till death on it. It's fucking hard. Yeah, it's and I shit. love that. Um, they were all part of the Boston crew thing with SSD and uh, like negative effects and slap shot. Uh, super straight edge. Cool songs. I don't know. It was just like, uh, I found it at a perfect time. It's 1983. Again, they took what minor threat kind of started, made it harder and made it like, a mm. this is our fucking thing. And then the youth yeah. crew bands kind of ran with that from there. So it's like this sure. middle earth kind of thing that I love elves. You love middle earth. I love middle earth. So that's uh exclaim. I didn't get the number 1983 brotherhood by DYS. I, you know, it's no secret that I, I prefer fuck you straight edge. Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's, this That's is the start this. of it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I, you know, I got to got to give them their flowers. Yeah. For that. We're going to stay in Massachusetts, mm. okay? For this next pick of mine. Lovely. And again, this is just like <laughs> it's really funny that this is the way that this is going, but my next pick is Sam Black Church, <laughs> Sam Black Church. <laughs> and this is this is what got me into them. Ah. Uh. You know, this is a formative thing to the reason this EP is part of the reason Twitching Tongues exists, mm. you know? So it's, you break me down, my DNA, this is right in there. I saw the big cool ass logo. The cool logo. Big, big purple artwork, favorite color. Purple? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and I heard the first 
little thing in Infernal Machine. The chan, da, 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 da. fucked up sounding guitar, crazy sounding record. Mm-hmm. And then he starts singing, and again, doesn't sound like nobody. Don't know what the lyrics are at first because they're so crazy. Then I realized that they're brilliant and one of a kind. Uh, and the songs have a hardness without being like stupid. Yeah. In a way that was like so profound to me. That makes a lot of sense looking at your yeah. musical tastes. Hmm. Hard without being stupid. Like you yeah. like, like, I mean, God's. But hate, I also like like Weird Al. No, you know, yeah, like I, like I, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. But <laughs> God's Hate songs are not simple. No, but they're all People hard. Think they are. They're all hard. I think they are. You know what I mean? So like yeah. that, it, that makes sense to me that this is that you would think about it in that way. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and then you know I like dumb. Yeah. I do like some dumb. Of course, you know, like ignorant for the sake of ignorant is. I do. I like, it. but this. <laughs> This just scratched so many itches that I didn't know were itching for me. Mm. Um, and I think you could argue it's their best thing. Oh, really? But I also think the that which that does not kill us is like perfect. That's so, the one. What can you do? All right, we're staying in Boston. Staying in Boston. I didn't realize that this was an EP. This was a pleasant surprise. Slap shot back on the map. Tang, 1986. Wow. 86. 86. I thought it was way later, and I thought thought it was Step On It. I thought that was the first thing. So I didn't know back on the map. And this was like still X'd up, singing with a a half a hockey stick. And. Oh, God, so fucking cool. And making him like hard weighing himself. Yeah. And not fucking with any of the New York, like any of the youth crew bands. They're like, we're not the same. This isn't yeah. positive. This is this is us. This is a negative thing. Yeah, and I'm not, you know, as a as a pretty not youth crew guy yeah. personally. Mm-hmm. I'm all I'm all in. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's not on this record, but Slapshot in Your Face is one of the hardest straight edge songs ever written. And yeah. it's a band that's playing in E standard. E standard. Out of Marshalls and Les Pauls. Like, like there's no come on. You know what I mean? So it's it's really like, again. I'm a big Boston in this era kind of guy and Slapshot is still a band that I'll put on from time to time. Just go, God damn. But regardless, yeah. I love <laughs> back on the map. And I think uh, a lot of the bands that would come later on in the nineties would, mm. would kind of say that about Slapshot at the time. Sure. Sure. We're staying in mass. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, well. I'll, I'll hit you with one more. Yeah. Uh, a band I really would be nothing without only living witness. Complex Man EP. Was that before or after? Before Promo Reform. That's before. Okay. Is that and hearing it, you really are like, who the fuck was this? Interesting. Because it sounds like Breakdown. Wow. But he's still got like the melody. And the produ- again, the production is really crazy. It sounds crazy, but in a way that is like raw and big and hard. Whoa. Um, and the songs... I really wonder why they didn't record these because there are big mosh parts in them, for one. They're really fast and technical that it's like a completely different band when Promo Reform came out. And is he singing? Singing? It's kind of. He's doing both. He is. Interesting. There's notes, but there's some stuff that's like so fast and patterny yeah, yeah. that they're like can't be notes. Uh, but it's three songs and they are... Three hits. Isn't that fun? I love it. That's my whole point about this. Is yeah. it's three songs done. Yeah. Done. <laughs> it's so good. That's so fun. That's how you that's how you present a band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the This hook. is who we are. What's the, the elevator pitch of a band? It's like yeah. here's five minutes. Here's here's track one. This is the hit. Yeah. Here's track two. It's the it's the crazy one. Here's track three. It's the epic one. Yeah. Yeah. It's all it takes. I like that. What's your next one? All right, we're gonna go. Straight to the Lower East Side. <laughs> oh, wow. And um, we don't talk about Warzone very much. No. Warzone, Lower East Side crew, the first Rev record, 1987. Yeah. Todd Youth on guitar. 
they have songs on this record that they recorded like eight times, mm-hmm. <laughs> like that were on. I love when a band does Dude, that. Dude, me you know? too, because I have I favorite, think, ver- I like having favorite versions of songs. Yeah. The Misfits and like. And Talking to Cold as Life last week was just like, man, you it, you believe in these songs and you're going to fucking yeah. record them until the world believes in them too. Yeah. And I think that's the way to do it. Because if I had done that sometimes, maybe one day I'd be happy with the, <laughs> uh, the, the perfect version of one, you know? The Misfits box sets have songs that are like four oh or five times, you know, and I have a favorite one. Each time. And the best version of them, they didn't fucking put out. Yeah, right, right. Um, so oh. this is the Lower, Lower East Side Crew, the first Rev record, 1987. I remember seeing it when I was getting into music wow. and and getting into like the straight edge thing and figuring out what Youth Crew was. And all interestingly, all of the later like Rev bands and, and schism bands would thank Rabies and Warzone. Yeah. And like, and like they were always like, it was weird. Warzone was always part of both, like the AF skinhead thing mm-hmm. and then the, the straight edge thing, the youth crew yeah. thing too. And like, I didn't get it and it took, it took a minute. Um, but that's how I like figured it out. And I was like, Oh, like a, a Floyd Rose and a backwards hat on Todd youth sure. on the cover. Cool. Like, yeah, that sounds yeah, yeah. fun. <laughs> you know, like, and, and that's what I got to. And the song always was the song. And this is not to be confused with, I have kind of an honorable mention already, but it's just to not to be confused with a 1996 record called Lower East Side, which is another EP that Victory right. put out. What can you do? With a lot of the same recorded songs. So not yeah, to be confused with that. Yeah, I think this is one of the that. first wars on mentions on Hard Lore. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it is. Which is funny. And, you know, I don't know how formative it was for me but like it's an undeniable yeah piece of music it's a, it's a staple it's like it's a, a thing staple. yeah it's one of the things that you know scott vogel whispered in my ear <laughs> at at one point lower east side crew war zone <laughs> respect um this is uh, this is this is formative hardcore music to the entire genre yes Just period yes and i feel like this is an example of something where like wouldn't necessarily be on my top five, but if someone said like this is a top five EP of all time, I, w- I yeah. would like AF. I'd be like, yeah, hey, you a specific. You know how I am. I love lore. I love the fact that oh, Rabies yeah. is playing drums on United Blood on the cover. Yeah, that's fucking sick. Like I love it shit cool. like that. I love the tie-ins. And I love like figuring that out when I was a kid by reading fucking liner notes and shit was like. That was the fun. That was. And seeing that kind of every scene in the world is built by like 10 guys switching instruments. Mm-hmm. Like New Orleans, New Orleans, like metal. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like eight guys <laughs> and it's like eight bands <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy Bowers and all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's Warzone AF. Madball. We'll get there. Good Lord. Yeah, we, we sure will. <laughs> My next pick, <laughs> Suffocation, Despise the Sun. <laughs> That's a great pick. I almost it I is. almost did put that on. there. I will say, full disclosure, there's some that I, I think about putting on. I go, he's for sure going to do that. I don't need to worry about it. Smart. This I was think one. I had a couple of those. Yeah. Um, a, a great, timeless EP in the middle of your career yeah. is crazy. Fun. But not insane. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think this is on streaming, which is cool. No, I don't think it is Again, either. Yeah. Elite organization. To despise the Sun listeners, elite. Production is where they dialed in. This is right before self-titled, I think. So they had the like post Pierce from within kind of semi-modern mm-hmm. production dialed in. The swag. And oh, the swag was unlocked by this time. Yeah. They knew who they were. Exactly. And the artwork rocks, production rocks, lyrics are sick. There's a big fucking pit in every song. Mm. So to somebody like who hears death metal in some way and is like, I think I like that, but I don't know where to start. It's rare to have something like this. Right. A four song EP. That you can just smoke and be like, oh, this is okay. That's fucking. This is something I can sink my teeth. In. Perfect. There should be more. Yes. More death metal EPs. I'm glad that you 
are an advocate for EPs in general. Dude, Taylor Young is a EP mark. Dude, I, I think they're perfect, and I'm He's glad that we agree. Them. Yeah, big time. I love an EP, but there, there's just the risk involved in making that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this isn't on streaming. It's crazy. There's some weird reason to that, I'm sure, and I, I mean, don't know. I mean, I think it's No Gods, No Masters is not on one of them. Spotify, I think. For some, it's Which on is, Apple Music. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> and it's titled wrong. Anyway, what's it's, the how, next? How is it titled? I think it's No Gods, No Master or something, oh, or really? No God, No Master. It's. I know it's fucked up. That's I'm not going to look it up, but there's something wrong with it. Um, but that's... But then with things like that, where no gods, like, made you guys. Yeah, kind of. You know? That was the first, like, ever, like, the, the other guys had quit. So that was the first, like, here's the band. There was, like, a statement. Yeah. And that's what they should be. Yeah, it's like, okay, we're starting over. Here's an EP. This is us. Yes. And then Isolation came, and it was like, this is us. And then Blinded Fuck was another you. EP, which is fine. I, I... I love blinded. Yeah, I I like the blinded. every other kind of thing, but it's just not. It's not a sustainable method. No, if you're not re-recording songs or also like Candlemas Nightfall, you know oh. that's not on my list. But it's is that an EP? It's six songs, uh, but with ten tracks, right? You know, yeah. So it's like obviously sometimes you know what you got, and you go fuck. We should do more shit. And present this as an LP because it's this is like our best thing. Mm. Sometimes you're gonna do an EP and you go, should we? <laughs> we should probably do some more and like so that this can be in our list of now with streaming. Yeah, EPs is a different section. You got to scroll farther to get there. Yeah, so it's an even greater risk. So stupid. So stupid. I get it. Put it all in one thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. We're staying in New York. Yeah. Staying in New York. We got. We really are. I got all the next two. Yeah. GB. Uh, it's Rev 04. I think I have it written. Rev 04. That's so crazy to just see that. 1988. Hold your ground. The um, spirit of 88. Yeah. Alive in, in this record. Produced by Walter and Don Fury. Jesus um, Christ. This was one where there was an insert in it and there's a thanks to. Okay. A thanks to. And it's literally Ray of today. Ray B's. <laughs> Uh, J Crackdown. I could have figured yeah. out that that was a band. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we t Porcel, Sammy. Like we talk about this shit all the it's time. It's a map. It's it's. There you go. It's, it's a, a map it's a, to more things. A map to more music. And then by the bottom, it's fucking Youth Defense League. Sick of it all. Crackdown. New York Hoods. Token Entry. Wide Awake. Up Front. Fed Up. Intact. Touchdown. Like twenty five bands. Yeah. That are, you know if they're listing them. They're all going to be around there. Token Entry is one of the funniest and most awesome band names of all time. Token Entry rocks. Beyond is another one that I always think is funny. Just, what's your band? Beyond. Beyond. It's just Beyond. Straight Edge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, Mike Judge. Like, there's just like a, a ton of shit in there. Um, yeah. This, this seven inch was extremely important to me. This yeah. was one of the first youth crew bands I ever heard. Um, Possibly the first song I ever heard was Big Mouth. Mm. Um, wow. I don't know. I don't remember why. Something to do with like it being in someone's soul seek library alphabetically. Uh. And so it's a B. <laughs> you know what I mean? That got there. Yeah. What what was the song? You ever get did you ever have you ever owned a car? Yeah, yeah. Respectfully? Yeah. And like, do you know where like the first song on your iPod plays when you plug it in? Yeah. It was an anal cunt song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was anal cunt by anal cunt, which my dad Mine found was, on the computer one time and was oh, not happy. No, you got spanked for that one. Huh? I got the Lord had a word with me. Yeah. Yeah. He manscaped you in other ways. <laughs> um, mine was typo a number one, oh. which like now that sounds that song title sounds like a brilliant marketing tactic to make that happen. Totally. Yeah. A period number one. Yeah. Saw them play a bunch of these songs that tied down. Still fucking hit. You still might be going, different from your friends, but if you're true, they'll understand. Like I remember all of these fucking lyrics because I just used to sit and like 
literally study this shit in front of the record player, just like, you know, they grew up doing as it was. And it was just like, we can talk about, we can talk about it with Siv yeah. when he's on the show in a couple weeks. Coming soon. Very cool. Breaking news. Yeah. Gorilla Biscuits, 1988. Groundbreaking. Uh, you know, headlining fest to this day with these fucking songs. And think about the, the career. Legendary man. Think about like Walter. Yeah. Coming from that. That's a gangster right there. Okay. My, my next pick is more, not really so much, but like mine are definitely more modern compared to yours. For the uh, most I'm part. getting there. I'm getting there. Okay. This is la much later in this band's discography. Mm. And I think it is the best collection of songs. They, it's tough to say. Mm. Sheer terror, old, new, borrowed and blue. Awesome. Which a re-recording new songs, a cover, yeah. and like a sad cover. Old, new, bar, and blue. Yeah. Conceptually, ah, uh, so fucking brilliant. Like you love that. <laughs> oh, dude, I love. And because it ties, I love in, an insane concept. Because that's a wedding thing, right? Something old, something yeah. new, and it ties into the love story, the love song shit. Yeah. Like it, it's like it fits them so well. Yeah. yeah, and it opens with the best song they ever wrote. Goes into a re-recording of a classic. An amazing cover. It's perfect. And it sounds I if you show me this now, I would I would tell you it was recorded in 2013. Huh. I think it was produced by Josh Silver, which is really badass. That's fucking yeah, sick. That's, um, could be again, completely top, lying. Top of his head. Top of my head again, just to clarify. Um production wise, unbelievable. Lyrically, Paul Bearer is like in his own world. He's an actual hateful sad genius <laughs> in a way that it's like all I've ever wanted to be. And I think this this is me. It's hard to say mm. that these are their best songs, but it's their best recording, which is very important. Which is fair. Yeah, it is. Sometimes I don't it's... like the I've never the this production is on par with like Master Killer promo form. And and that's it's saying, crazy. That's saying something. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Very cool. Keep on keep keep on truck. We're gonna we're staying in New York for a minute. Let's stay there. Um so by so the last one was eighty eight, next one's eighty eight, and the one after that's gonna be eighty eight. That was I mean, the spirit of eighty eight is is that's a real thing. And I'm a youth crew guy, so we're staying in New York, yeah. of course. Judge New York crew. Schism. I did. I knew I didn't have to put yeah, this on mine. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I had yeah. an original. I sold it for some reason. Hard times, I think. Um, I think I kept the poster <laughs> and sold it without it. <laughs> you uh, brat bastard. <laughs> I told him. But yeah. um, just like, you know, fed ups on it. And uh, the New York crew song is on it. And again, being such a mark for stories and like oh uh, yeah. like that tells a story about boston and new york like beefing sure. and like well what they used to call it like the new york wolf pack and calling it united blood and like all this shit. also throughout our childhoods and formative years they were like the band that didn't play like they're never gonna fucking play never. again you're never gonna see him and like even so do you it remember just made there it was, so mythical there was a um a documentary that was started and then there was like a yeah. fire yeah. And they like lost everything. So it was like, even like the little window we were getting closed. <coughs> and they're a band full of lore. Chunk, the Chunk King. Yeah. Can suck it. Just hating, record. just hating production and saying, Fuck. hating your record so much that you trash the copies and do it again. Badass, frankly. <laughs> Fucking cool. And possibly, I mean, from what I've heard, the like, even the right call sonically, like I've heard that, yeah. you know, I've heard them. Right. And yeah. The one, the one's not great, and bringing it down is pretty great. But this is the first, <laughs> this is the first seven inch. Yeah, um, just cool, more straight edge shit, and again, bring in the like hard part into so all that's, of this. You know, as a lad, I'm getting into things. People are showing me stuff. Some of it's a little too melodic for me. Yeah. Some of it's a little too positive for me. Some, some of it is just not, not hitting. But fuck you, straight edge. Yeah. We're straight edge, but fuck you. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. 
was like, all right, I found a, another <coughs> one on the list of things for Colin. And I was dying for that. Yeah. I was dying for it. So anytime As I an found angsty, it. angsty, horny little fucker. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> angry, straight edge, horny. Judge ticked all the boxes somehow. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, so there, there's not there like these things I think are probably pretty obvious to people for me to choose. Uh, sure. So we don't need to like wax on about them too much, but formative, yeah. important, great. It's a great pick. And I knew I didn't have to put it yeah, on yeah. because I knew it was coming. It was coming. My next pick crown of thorns, train yard blues. Yeah. So this fucking record for me um, opened my eyes to like kind of what hardcore could be Mm. because every story you hear about crown of thorns in this era, it's like Isaac was the baddest man alive. Mm -hmm. And then you hear them or see them. And it's like, yo, the guy that just justifiably whooped my friend's ass (laughs) is is singing these like melancholic sad emotional lyrics over these hard riffs. Yeah. And like think about that and me, you know? Yeah. That's all I ever eventually was like that's what I'm doing then if that's if that is allowed. Yeah. If that's passable. If that's passable then that's all I want. Absolutely. And like Isaac alone proved that possible. When you think about like everything else out, everything else was like, I'm crazy. I'm insane. I'll fucking kill you. And, and crown of thorns was like, I have feelings and I'm emotional. And this, and then, then this uh, next song about the juggernaut from X-Men. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's one record. That's all, everything I like (laughs) together. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) Crown of thorns, train yard blues, a perfect piece of music. I remember at FYA, you were, you were buzzing for, oh my for God. that and for Life of Agony. You yeah. were a kid. You're a kid in a candy shop. I remember. And we're back to back on that New York show in a couple weeks. Wow. The Triple B Streets of Hate Days showcase October 1st. Wow. See you there. Um, He's sharp, this guy. I tell you what. Yeah, this is a perfect, yeah. perfect record. Um, the next one, again, and another thing that I will say that the youth crew thing benefits from. Our EPs, because they oh were just, they're just they were just throwing. Is them there out. A, other than break down the walls, Bo? Yeah. Is there a good youth crew LP? Bringing it down, the turning point. I, they're not youth crew to me. You know. Okay. I, I just like even if they are. Okay. I can't. I can't mentally cla- because they're so fuck you. Yeah. I can't even classify them. So. Uh, turning point, chain of strength. Instead, wide awake never did an LP. They have a good demo though. Couldn't bring. It, couldn't use it. So break down the walls is the only one. What were you going to say? Well, I mean, then there's, we're not in this alone. I mean, the, yeah, you, they, got you, they got it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, side by side, you're only young once. Rev yeah. 1988. Wow. Um, 88 is crazy. Crazy, dude. Our numbers, our numbers doubled James in 88. James Vitale coming his pants right now. <laughs> us talking about these things. Um, Rev 1988, side by side, you're only young once. We jinxed this the last time we talked about it. Side by we side. really did. Um, back now fu- it's just demise. Demise is the only band that hasn't played again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, w- I would love to manifest that one yeah, right, into happening. Yeah. So demise is the only band that hasn't played again. Never. Anyway, side um, by side. Side by side was kind of also mythical because yeah. they like like they were a thing that was kind of separate from the other youth crew guys, and they kind of yeah. beefed. And that was like, that became a song on the Alone in the Crowd. It was, there's like all this lore behind it that it was like fucking cool. And I had heard through the grapevine that Jules, the singer, would like still go to shows. Just like go. He was just into hardcore. Like sure. through the 2000s. So Yeah, that made a difference when you were a kid, fuck didn't it? Yeah, dude. I, I mean, to this day, I am, and we've talked about this before, but I, I like, if he's home, Martin's going to a show, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that makes, that makes a fucking difference. If the venue has a bar, he's at the show. Straight up. I just I like, I, I, I like who doesn't like that, obviously. Um, yeah. But side by side was fucking 
formative because there was more of the, like the song backfire is literally like you yeah, hate life, you, but I'm you sure. don't know what it's about. That's the fucking yeah. lyric. It's like, you don't yeah. know what you're fucking talking about. Like you're alive, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. And, no, exactly. You know? And, uh, also like aesthetically, Side by side was on another on another dimension. What's dude. on the is is it the Beastie Boys on the cover? No, it's LL Cool J. It's LL Cool J. That's right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The <laughs> shoes are so <laughs> big. If you look at the awesome. cover, it's insane. That's really you know why. Yeah, <laughs> big old fucking. <laughs> so yeah, uh, side by side, iconic cover. You can't big miss time. It. You can't miss it. I got a real modern pick, modern to us. Okay, for this next one. Mm-hmm. Blacklisted. Yeah. Peace on Earth, yeah. War on Stage. I knew this was one where I knew you were gonna Dude. And I I haven't heard this in ten years. What's on it? Let me look at it. Memory Lane. Ah. Fucking canonized. Yeah, I mean Woo. God damn. Woo. <laughs> um and this they were like Era defined. Yeah. When you look at that and, and and bands that came out after this just were trying to do this. Mm. And so even even Blacklisted, every time they put something out, completely transformed who they were. Oh, dude, they were kings of that. And I oh, I deeply, deeply respect them. Yeah, they were kings um, at doing that. Just never sounded the same twice. They were the first band, I think it was when... Um, What's the what's the one the other LP with the longer name? Uh, Beat goes on. No, lonelier, lonelier. Yeah, heavier than heaven, lonelier than God. Thank you. They did a like they did like a East Coast record release, a Chicago record release, and then a and I was they like, were a fucking I was like what phenomenon in Chicago. Oh yeah, yeah, big time. Big but time. I, I like couldn't believe it. I was like, they, they can do that. Like they're big yeah. enough to do you know. And now it's like <laughs> you know. Well, out heaven than heaven. That. Yeah, this is a good example of this record was like existed to to boost heaven than heaven eventually. Right. You know, it's, I think if not all three of out of four are on are on there, I can check for you. Um, you don't have to. It's fine. Okay. But heavier than heaven was so interesting because I remember the unmastered version leaked. Oh. And people were so devastated for them that the pre orders exploded. I remember that. This thing must have sold 20,000 LPs. Holy shit. I, I forgot all about that. I got all four colors and I didn't have a job. <laughs> and that was on Death Wish. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Big time. Um, and I think this being this good and the production being this cool, George's lyrics were always, always yeah. 10 years ahead of his time. Uh, they could, that, I mean, their comeback show is selling out in one second is. Yeah. There you go. Is cool to see as like we're we are the like blacklisted generation. Yeah, 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 for sure. They we were literal kids as they were running shit. Um, um, so it's 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 good to see their name they, back on the marquee. They also had the reputation. The most frightened I've ever been that wasn't a killer show was when they mm. covered River Runs Red. Yeah. And like, I was legitimately afraid to be where I was like in the room. They had the yeah. reputation of a live show being just fucking. Oh, s- chaos. And chaos. Violence. Which is interesting because it, that went through even on these songs. And it's like the big pit is like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like just bl- like a blues scale. Yeah. Weird riff that nothing sounds like. Yes. That, nothing did this. Nobody sounded like this. Nobody did what they were doing. And if they did after, they didn't do a good job. <laughs> very good. So, kudos very, to Blacklist. Very well said. <laughs> Thank you. My next one, a recent acquisition. Oh. The Outburst Miles to Go. Miles to EP. Go. I don't Damn. know what the impact of this was at the time. Do you know what I mean? No idea. No idea. I know what it did to my group of friends when we heard it. And, and and I would I would maybe like two generations later. Yes, was like oh no this is this is the this is what we like. Yeah, yeah. And it was like oh they there you go 
They did it. Um, awesome production, awesome lyrics, hateful, hateful aggressive good, songs. Good, like the vocals were like good. You know what hard, I mean? Like hard, unique, one of a kind cool. riffs. There's a little poster in here. Brian Donahue vocals. Um, this came out on James Blackout Vitale. Records, 1989. 89. 89. And it's fucking... About, about, about five or six years ahead of its time, probably. Just considering how hard it was. I would love to know more about... Oh, dude, and here you go. Like, here, I've never looked at this. There's a picture on the front. You're not going to be able to see it. But the singer right there is wearing a Metallica shirt. That, and that's something young Bo would be like, wow. I'd be like, he could do that? I'm allowed that? to like Metallica, too? Exactly. Um, fucking awesome. And that's 89. 89. So that's a real Metallica shirt, you know? Like, <laughs> that's a, And that's after Ride the Lightning came out and people were like, Metallica are fucking posers and they're yeah, not yeah, yeah. hardcore anymore. Yeah. That's an Injustice <laughs> or before. Yeah. It's a puss head design, I can tell. Um, but yeah, I, I have no idea what the impact of this band was like. Like, Breakdown... I do know because you would hear about it. Killing time, like the raw deal demo or whatever. You like yeah. there are show like there's VHSs and like I've seen videos. I don't know about Outburst. I don't know. You just don't know what people thought of it. I them? don't know if at the time they were popular. Yeah. yeah. If they were over. If I don't know if they were over. I'll tell you damn what, they sure surely are now. Uh yeah, this is this was pretty pretty up there on mine. Good. Um Kind of solely based on what this did for our, my generation of, of like new bands. Yeah, yeah, dude. And I don't know if you can tell those of you watching, they are just lads. They're children. Just lads. Kids. I think there's a cool, there's a funny picture out there somewhere of Outburst just taking a picture with Peter Steele. Really? I'm uh, just like, yo, it's Peter Steele. Let's get a pic. You know, like I, something are you, like that. Are you thinking of the Youth of Today one? I don't think so. There's one with Porcel and Capo with Peter and Peter's like <laughs> wearing a No, those they they had to have been boys. I'm pretty sure it was like Outburst being like, yo, it's Peter Steele. Oh, he's Can just like take out a picture? About. Outburst Peter Steele. I'm just getting articles about Peter Steele outburst. <laughs> <laughs> Goes on a conservative outburst. <laughs> <laughs> I I instinctively wrote down a split. Does, but I, I have, really think I think I should save it for a splits episode. Ah, oh, fuck, but it's the best one. <laughs> I know, and I'm sure it's the same one I'm as you. I'm looking at it. I got it in front of me. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same right, one. I'm moving them. Son of a bitch. I just feel like that's a whole other conversation. I just don't know as many. There are fewer good yeah. splits out there, I would say, than good EPs. Okay, then Terror Ringworm split. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I mean... It go go ahead and talk about it. Break that thing down for me. Show yeah. show them the back. The read that track list off. Oh, the track list. Track <clears> read <throat> it. Out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> this was a song. I'm pretty sure they play it most of the time <laughs> now. Yeah. But this yeah. was a song that they didn't play for a long time, and it, it was like a thing, you know. All right. And um, it's the one for those of you who don't know. It's the one that starts with "fuck everything and everybody," and I remember at the time when I first heard it, I thought it was like a, a borderline industrial song because this, ver I know, hear me out. This version sounds in such a way and my mm. fucking, I, I downloaded it, pirated it and sure. played it off an iPod. My shitty car stereo sounded so crazy. So you just thought it was like, he's riding on the toms, right? For so, yeah. it sounded like, a Nine Inch Nails part or like a ministry part right. or something to me. Unbelievable song. Um, Nothing to Lose is the next terror song, the second Dude, terror song. The Carl, the Carl First Blood, Nothing to Lose, Mosh Call. When he, uh, oh. Bro. <laughs> I don't know how he does that. The ringworm side. Come on. No one dies alone. No one <laughs> dies. And then House of Hell. House of Hell. Holy Lordy shit. Lordy have mercy. I mean, for anybody who doesn't know, Death Wish did three Dead Man's Hands releases. There's a hearts that's yet to be filled. Mm -hmm. um, but then a couple of prospective hearts. Yeah, there's been a few. Many times. We've both been pitched for it. Yeah. 
And uh, this is one that I got when it came out. I remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, I hijacked your pick there, but it's no. I, I'm glad that you did because it's fun to that we finally agree agree on one and say it at the same time. Um, I man, I, this is is this the same recording as Los Alone? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Ah, uh, hmm. let me. Uh, we can find out. Recorded at Blood Tracks in the fucking valley. By the way, is what it says in the liner notes. That's Nick Jet, so maybe not in the fucking valley. Yeah, two different days. About two weeks apart. Engineered by Nick. Terror and Ringworm. God damn. Perfect. A lot of bands did a split with Ringworm. Cold as Life did a split with Ringworm. I found that out uh, only when doing like research for. Oh, wow. Album, you know? Didn't realize. Yeah, it's that. almost like it's like a rite of passage to do it. It's like wrestling Randy Orton, you know, doing a split yeah. with Ringworm. It's the same thing. I'd like you to. You got to do it. I'd like to write that. Uh, God damn, dude. Terror and Ringworm are like the best of two generations yeah. kind of yeah 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 and i feel like ringworm doing a split with terror so far yeah so far into their career is like here's the torch yeah go ahead yeah even though scott was like has been blazing the trail his entire <laughs> life very true wow two two of two landmark hardcore bands playing two of their hardest most formative songs house of hell ever is if specifically this version is my favorite yeah. ringworm song. Ringworm song. Yeah. Like I, I got it, you know. I love that fucking song. Production crazy. Great. On this version. You're right. Yeah. All right. 89, last youth crew band. Chain of strength, true till death. Rev 10. When I heard it and I saw someone say true till death. And it meant straight edge. There was no, at the time, sure. there was no ambiguity about it. <laughs> that was what I was looking for. Now sure. they've since whatever. I don't think it was true to them. Mm -hmm. Still is for me. But yeah. Chain were the West Coast kind of counterpart sure. to all the, the East Coast shit. And... um my Jesus, my fucking band with Chris, that first band, I think we covered Chain of Strength every show we played. Mm. Every single show. One time, I can't remember the band, Chris would know, there was a show at DePaul. It was a three-piece band or a four-piece, but the drummer didn't know a Chain song. And they said, does anybody know Chain of Strength through these eyes? And Chris went, I do. Sat down and, and played ripped it. ripped it? Ripped it. He got the pause and everything. That's these awesome. Eyes. Nailed it. <laughs> Uh, they were just super important. They were just, sure. they, they, and they were the band. I don't know if I'm talking out of turn or anything, but they were the band for me where it was like, oh, they have posi tops. Oh, they all have X watches. Oh, they, uh. they were, it was kind of like what you think youth crew to look like. Mm. They were doing, you know? Yeah. Intentional or not, probably, but <laughs> you know, that, and that for me was formative. Sure. If you're listening to this thinking, if you're like stopping to listen to these things yeah. while we're while we're talking about this, and you're listening to Chain of, Strength, Chain of Strength and you're thinking, I'm not sure this one is for me, yeah. you're not alone. Yeah, no, for sure. And and again, I'm sure people would think that about neglect. You know, like there for are sure. there are other but they're they're insane. But yeah, I'm sure they're out there. <laughs> but, but there's this is Chain of Strength is one of those bands that I just could never really mm -hmm. It, it, Ch Chain of Strength is one of those bands that I listened to that, that made me decide, like, huh, maybe not all hardcore music is for me. There you go. But I'm the guy putting 25 to Life on his best EPs list, you know? Um, and proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take it away. <laughs> take it away. Uh, let's see. Here we go. I'm got, I got a lot of mo modern picks coming up, Good. especially because we've, we've shared a few. Earth Crisis All Out War. Had to happen. I have that somewhere. I don't know why I didn't grab it. I think this is the superior EP over Firestorm mm -hmm. to me. It's more It's more punk, honestly. Yeah, definitely. Raw recording. Um, Did you say bigger raw, songs. raw -er? raw -er. More, more raw? raw. <laughs> okay. Additionally <laughs> raw. Raw -er recording is what yeah, I heard. Raw -er XD <laughs> yeah. recording. Um I guess it's more vegan than straight edge, you know, which 
Hate. Sucks. Yeah. But <laughs> for me personally, for them, it's huge. Firestorm, obviously, I could it was like, that's the hit. That's yeah. That's Enter Sandman, brother. Mm-hmm. That's timeless. Mm-hmm. All Out War was just more to sink my teeth into. Yeah. But all, all Out War, you could say, mm-hmm. I don't know that this was the first Earth Crisis record I heard, but like, I'm not straight edge without this. Oh. Period. Period. So, so there, so that's kind of my thing with my last several picks from mm. Warzone through Chain. Because you're not blank without these. Absolutely things. not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. These are these are the anatomy yes. of Colin and Bo. Yes. As much as any LP, these these are on there. And then there's just there's some coming up now that I just think are fucking awesome. Yes. Yeah. We're getting out of the formative years and getting a little yeah. more into. I'm really excited for the next one because I almost would have to imagine it's on yours. It might be in your top five. Hit me with it. Pardon this interruption. We're here to tell you about Athletic Greens AG1. Woo! Wow. Wow. They just sent us some more, and it was like Christmas morning. I'll tell you what. Dude, it really was. <laughs> I can't get enough. No, no. I do it every day. My mom texted me the other day. This, there's no clinical backing for this, but she said, Has, have you noticed your hair getting thicker with AG1? And I said, I can't confirm or deny that, mother. That's, that's what she thinks. That's... Those are bold claims. Bold claims. Those are the bald community out there. <laughs> you know, you got you might have that going for you. Uh, AG1 is a daily green supplement. You drink it, you forget about it. Yeah. You feel better. Yeah, we I got feel vitamins. Like I've been missing this concoction my entire life. Mm. We got vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients made for just about everybody. For our bodies, for sure. For sure. And guess what? What's that? You go to athleticgreens.com slash hardlore. Mm-hmm. You're getting five free travel packs. Five so of when these? You go to a show when you go to some fest or something. You got five. You got the whole the whole week is covered. And and a year supply of vitamin D. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You're gonna need it. I it, I notice every time I don't I haven't taken it yet. So that's as soon as, soon as we're done, I'm gonna take mine. I think that's, I think, I think that's, that's very accurate. Yeah. Like, uh, honestly, a day without it, it's like a day without sunshine, <laughs> you know? Day without water. It don't feel good. Don't so feel good. So get on it. Yeah. It's also manscaped time. Boy, baby. is it. I'm a, and it's really permanently manscaped time. I'm a manscaped, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a manscaped lifer. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you. I use. I don't go a day without reviving my crops, Mm-mm. without preserving my crops, Mm-mm. and you shouldn't either. No, I use the the body wash, the foot spray. They got a. I got a, a recent cologne. It smells mm. great. And this, you don't don't just take our word for it, man. Re- realistically, every single day, somebody tags us in some post that's like, "I bought Manscaped because of Hard Lore, and I I can't believe it. I can't believe what I was missing." Yeah. It's awesome. That could be you. It's it's awesome. Um, if you use code Hardlore, you get twenty percent off and free f- shipping. I don't know if I should swear in an ad, but I mean, you know, it's that that's how good. <laughs> yeah. It's a steal. It's a steal. Um, and like Colin said, don't take our word for it. They, I'll, I'll tell you what, we haven't touched on this in a minute. We used Manscaped before ever doing anything with them. We bought out of our own pockets. No, 100%. We sought out Manscaped. We wanted to see if it was something that we felt comfortable. I used another YouTube code to buy Manscaped, you know? <laughs> Probably Maddie Matheson so. for me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're honored to be part of the team. We love the team. We, 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 we asked them. We were like, Manscaped, please mm-hmm. escape us. <laughs> please. So code Hardlore, 20% off, free shipping. Wow. It's also whatnot time. <sighs> Our triumphant return is imminent. It's imminent. But more importantly than that, Whatnot is the best place to buy and sell new and used hardcore memorabilia. It's got, you got hardcore stuff, you got metal stuff, you got sports stuff, video games, wrestling. And you think, you hear that and you go, what are they talking about? Yeah. And it's Cameo meets Twitch meets eBay. Meets eBay, yeah. These live chats and conversations and, and, uh, experiences with the people that you know and love we got brody king where you also get to buy stuff yeah 
and interact with people. It's a it's a live thing that never gets repeated. You can't watch it again. You get to hang out, interact. We got Brody King on there. We got Lars from Rancid on there. We got Dan Housen on there. There's probably a ton of other people on there that we don't even know. Yeah, that you definitely know. That you- <laughs> so you click that little link in our description. You get 15 bucks off your first purchase. Mm-hmm. So buy something from us soon when we come back and, you know, you'll feel so good. We got all kinds of stuff. I got boxes full of stuff. Can't wait. It's going to be so soon. <laughs> back to the episode. Little band called Mad Ball. Huh. Dropping many suckers. Okay. Dude, dropping many suckers over ball. I think because it's like ball songs set it off production. It is on mine. Okay. Okay. I could have could have said it next, but... um. I would also say that over ball, and I would I would have thought that would be sacrilegious or something. I'm just a pragmatist, you know. But I, you know, Madball is is one of the rare cases of a lot of the things I've said is like, you know, other than no, nah, I guess not. Many of the things I've said are these bands' best releases. Mm. Many of the ones you've said are the best songs those bands wrote for sure. Um. Madball just kept getting better. Yeah. For fucking 10, 15 years. I uh, and I think that that needs to be applauded. I Freddie sounds crazy. Yeah. Like everything about it is perfect. So, big fan. Yeah. Big old fan. This is the only genre I feel like of music where other this and like metal is where the like EP or LP conversation can even really take place yeah how is the paradise ep and ep shit's long as fuck and arguably it is but it's also like that's that was put out to keep the born to die cycle going i know know know. know right now it's funny um i just think about these things like well what are other commercial eps you know so that's why i was bringing it up yeah uh yeah i know there's one of my top five that is a commercial EP by, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Cool. cool. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Uh, my next pick, Trapped Under Ice, Stay Cold. How could you not? This changed the world, brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to describe it. It completely shifted the landscape of modern hardcore. Yeah, I mean, you just described it. <laughs> I guess that is it. Yeah. It killed melodic hardcore was dead. Thank it, this killed it. And everybody camo pants were 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 there. They arrived. Jean shorts yeah. became a genre of music rather than just a garment. <laughs> yeah. Finally. Yeah. I I remember being in people's multiple people's cars. And yeah. that is what was on. You know what I mean? Like I remember the demo that. already kind of did that. Yeah. The demo was like, oh shit. oh shit. Like what, what and who or is this Baltimore, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Who, do, who are these guys? Where did they come from? Yeah. And then this was like such a crazy, the amount of anticipation that there was for stay cold was like, I had never seen anything like, I'm surprised this isn't in your top five. Actually. My top five is like deeply personal. Okay. Deeply. And, but th- I would say in terms of like my first tour, my first two tours I ever did in my life were with Trapped Rice. They played four of these songs on the whole thing. I've seen them live a hundred times probably. You can t- there, There's a reason Trapped and Rice is headlining festivals to this day. Absolutely. It- and it's... What we said Kinda about st- it didn't even start here. It started with the fucking demo. They're still playing right. half the demo at these shows. What we said about negative approach kind of applies to TUI <laughs> with like modern. Trevor Rice, basically the modern negative approach in terms of geographically, dude. L- London hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What would London har- What would hardcore in England sound like without Trap and Rice? I don't know. They're the biggest band from. The chisel, I guess. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but even <laughs> we, they we would have gotten like, to the chisel a little earlier, maybe without <laughs> Trevor Rice. But man, they changed shit around the literal world. And good, good and job, there was T-Y. no um, ambiguity about it. They were no. touring. They were fucking kicking ass. They were no. out. Everybody loved them. You know. Yeah, good, good pick. That's a solid. Pick. They had swag. <laughs> swag. 
They literally had an indefinable type of swag where it was like, damn, this band is good. And there's something like superstarish about the guys in the band, <laughs> you know, <laughs> where you just wanted to be friends with them. <laughs> Which you can't teach that. You can't teach want to be friends with no, them. You really can't. Floor Punch Division One Champs in oh, My Blood 01 brother. Records, 1996. <sighs> Again. Fuck you straight. Yeah, up. this is this is the, the best kind. Yeah, this is it too. No exceptions. Woo. Forget it. There yeah. was there was a period of time where you the Arms Way van. If that feedback came on and doo -doo 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 -doo, if that came on, you had to jump on somebody. Like that was like yeah. what happened. Um super important band. They kind of bridged the gap for me. Because in the nineties, you know, Earth Crisis fucking killed youth crew. Yeah. Integrity killed youth crew. Um, and they kind of bridged that gap of the 88 thing and the 2000s thing for me. It did. Very Cause important. it was, it was cause it's, it maintained the fuck you mm -hmm. that was lost. And if you guys don't know, go on YouTube and look up the final mosh, look up dude, the string of intros that they play at CBGB's as their yeah. last show. The picks that they, and it like me watching that as a kid after it was like these guys like all this stuff exactly exactly but they don't sound like this exactly so it was both confusing and inspiring exactly dude perfect but it was like oh there's this doesn't have to all go in a box yeah but also maybe i wish they sounded like right all these things and then that makes you deep in dive in and go oh. do they <laughs> like are are these are all these bands in the DNA of their music in different ways that I don't understand? For sure. Uh the no exception baseline does not get written without AF already doing right. those kinds of intros to songs. Right. You know what I mean? Like But then it's like Biohazard and Leeway are in there somehow. Yeah, that's a good point. Crazy band. I forgot they do the the Leeway one. I forgot. They're cool. Yeah. I remember James had it on VHS because he used to get there. There was no YouTube. You would get this yeah. shit from swapping with people. From a guy. And we would just watch it in his room. It's fucking sick. Yeah, and still straight edge. Still straight edge. 1996. Floor punch rips. Mm -hmm. Take it away. One of the greats. Yeah. Simply put. Simply. Period. Uh, my next pick. Man, I got I got some modern ones. And Okay. So this is an interesting one because All Out War is a band that oh. never stopped writing good music to this day. Right. Still do it. Six, seven years ago, I think maybe eight, God, maybe eight now. This is like a new record to me. Right. They put out an EP called Dying Gods. Right. That was the most brilliant decision a, a, a like classic metal, metallic hardcore band could have ever made because you're just getting to the streaming era. Mm. People's attention spans are dropping like crazy, all time low. And then they put five tracks recorded perfectly with some of the craziest. But there's there is a fucking riff that happens for ten seconds in the first track on this that like permanently altered the way that I perceive music. And I've been writing music a yeah, long time yeah, by, by the time, time I hear right, this. Right, right, right. Um, because it was just like, dude, how are they still doing this? And it was it inspired me to to write. That is inspiring. And literally the rare definition rare as fuck. So rare. I wouldn't even I it's it's un, they're a unicorn. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Yeah. But it does in All at War somehow. <laughs> to still be this good. Dying God's EP. Unbelievable. Perfect in sonically, structurally, lyrically, riffly. <laughs> Just dope. This one I think is, is going to be in people's top fives. I'm giving it, I'm, I'm putting it on here because it was certainly important for me. And possibly it holds up the best. American Scary. Nightmare, self-titled. Oh, man. Bridge 907. To the year 2000. Another, Another genre defining. Genre era defining. A thing. literal sea change of, of it was like, oh, everyone's going to try to sound like this now. And like, 
I don't like a single band that sounds like American Nightmare. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I, yeah. And somehow that shit works. Because it was hard. It was hard it was and it was aggressive. And and you're a lyric man and you're an I'm emotions a lyric, guy. I'm a big and, lyric man. And some of the best lyrics, straight up. <laughs> There's a straight line from Crown of Thorns to American Nightmare somehow. Somehow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and again, I love the lore. I love this shit. At the last 10-yard fight show, Wes is pitting hard as fuck to 10-yard right. fight. I love that. That's what yeah. I that's the shit that I live for is like, wait, these are two completely different things. Yeah. But are they? But are they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and like I'm so I'm all in on stuff like that. Um I think this was the first time I became aware of a record being like really valuable, like a modern record, mm-hmm. like something that wasn't Chung King or Age of Coral. Sure. Was like or or uh Division One Champs on Gold. On gold, yeah. yeah. For those of you who don't know, they they sacrificed a few copies of On Gold to the Jersey Shore <laughs> when that came out, just so that you could get a few get copies. Yeah, I think it was like hundreds, right? <laughs> Some, I mean, something a significant amount that will never be recovered. Yeah. So they're really rare. Um, but the, the 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 drummer boy American Nightmare version, I forget which color or whatever, but it was like the one, and it became. I remember it being like, oh, this is a commodity. This is something that like mm. people want. Very new to me, but I mean, that thing fucking rips. It holds up. It's incredible. I probably yeah. haven't listened to it in. I mean, it came out twenty three years ago, and you know every single second. Of it I probably still, know every right? lyric still. Yeah, yeah. I won't go. Yeah, that because I've been there that, before. Seven years before Trap and Ice came along. Yeah, this this set the tone for the next seven years. Yeah, yeah. This and ser- uh, yeah, those are blacklisted. <laughs> Have heart ceremony. That was like 2000 to 2007. Mm-hmm. It's a good pick. It's it's very true. Thank you. Uh, I got a. Oh, I'm scared to say this one because I I feel like I know it's in your top five. Oh, okay. Which makes me maybe want to hold off on it. Yeah. I'm gonna hold off on it because I I feel like it might be your number one. Honestly. This other one, too, maybe. But I'm going to go ahead and say this one. Alice in Chains, Jar of Flies. Oh, see, this is why I asked you if it had to be core. You told me it had this to be core. This is the only one I, I picked. Okay, well, that really? is, I have like a first list, and then I made my real one. It's the oh, second. Okay. It's the second one. Go ahead and talk about this, and then I, I will talk about it. Dude, uh, a, a, a commercial, a commercially successful EP. You know how fucking hard that is to attain? Mm-hmm. And to be like some of the... Least accessible, but also most acceptable, accessible music a band has written. Alice in Chains, I feel like, is so unfairly lumped into grunge. Absolutely. Because of how fucking hard they are. So hard. Where did that come from? I have no idea. It's a. I've, what are they like? I don't know. We got to We got to talk to to Jerry. We, we got to get it. Big Jerry on here, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, when I tell my smart device, good morning. It turns off my air conditioning that I sleep next to. It turns on some lights and it plays jars of flies every single morning. Every single day? Every single day for the last four months. For some reason, this, this, and only the first four songs, by the way, I don't like the harmonica song and I don't like the (laughs) swing song, obviously, because I think. Brother, you know I love a harmonica. Yeah. And you know I can't believe a harmonica. harmonica. It's not even a real harmonica. Don't care. Don't care a lot. A real harmonica is is uh it don't make sense. You don't need to, you don't need all that. You don't need to be breathing into the thing you're playing. Just give me a keyboard, you know? <laughs> what do you got to prove? Um just do that. Rotten apple, nutshell, I'll stay away. God, nutshell. And what's uh no excuses? No excuses. Those oh four my songs. God. It's fucking unbelievable. That's enough to carry a band to success there. Nowadays, if you got a, a, a run of four tracks alone, mm-hmm. you're probably you're playing Coachella for the rest of your life. Unbelievable. They just did that as like a free. It was like, ah, this is an EP that's going to yeah. exist, I guess. And then when they did the MTV Unplugged thing, they didn't even play all of those songs. And they're like cater made. They played. They didn't play Rotten Apple. No, but they played Nutshell and No Excuses, and gosh, damn. 
Oh my God. You can that play version of no excuses is like, is maybe my single favorite song thing they've ever done. And you could play that right on drums. Oh yeah. I play with Martin at practice the whole time. So that's very impressive to me. Cause it sounds like he's got eight arms. You know what I mean? It's not as crazy as it sounds. It's just syncopated really well. It's just like, he's doing the same thing perfectly. Every right, time. right. 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 Yeah. Right. Um, well, if we're going to do a, like a, like that, I have, I do have one that I was going to put that I took off. That is okay. a bigger EP. I've got one in my top five is the nine inch nails uh, broken EP. See, we, I expected that from you. I took it off because of the ruling, but, but I'm right. glad that we're doing this now. This won a Grammy. Yeah. I think that's the best thing they ever wrote. I think it probably, uh, no, I don't agree, but it, it's, it, it is incredible. It's, it's the hardest thing they ever wrote. It's, it's the hardest. It's like the craziest sounding. It sounds heavy. It has but crazy all, lyrics. And big. Fist fuck. And it won a yeah, Grammy. Like, like, it's fucking crazy. That song is hard as fuck, for one, and has a big, huge hook. Yep. That, in a way that, like, I, when I heard that, it was like, oh, man, I'm going to love Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. I got you. And then nothing else really did that for me. That's interesting to me. I digress. But um, maybe you could get me into them. You know, many have tried. Yeah, yeah. All have, all have really. I love that record, and I like Downward Spiral. Okay, and you don't. And that's fuck, about as far as I you go. don't like Pretty Hate Machine. No, I do. I like. Uh, I like. I like. You know, the, the had song. like a whole yeah, and yeah. a couple tracks. The couple crazy, tracks to me. Couple tracks for sure. The great. Well, I I love them, but I can. I I accept a couple tracks. The crazy thing about that record is eighty nine. Yeah. Same year, Outburst, Miles to Go came out. He made Pretty Hate Machine. It's just he. Bi- yeah, he. <laughs> yeah. Him. It boggles my mind. Yeah. Um, You're right. We kind of got crossed up there. But yeah, Allison Chains, great. Excellent. If, if, Darflies, Perfection, Broken EP, best thing they ever wrote. And these are, these are our non-hardcore. <laughs> I got one in my top five. Okay. I, if it's top but five. But you'll see. It, it still kind of counts. Okay. You'll see. How, oh man, I'm running low. How many you got before your top five? I got four and I got some like, I got some genuine honorable mentions on hand here. Okay. Righteous Jams, Boston Straight Edge 7 Inch. That's all you need to know. It yeah. was, they were called Invasion and then they changed right. the name. The lyric goes, Invasion used to be this band, but now we're playing Righteous Jams. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Um, one of DFJ's just endless fountains. The God, we got to get him on. We got to get him on here. Is every single one of those songs on Rage of Discipline? The LP? I yeah. I think so. Righteous See, James they, Invasion screen. They knew what they had. Where it's due, bust it, righteous dub. Yeah, they did a yeah. dub. They did like a reggae song too. Right. Which, like, that was another thing where I was a huge Bad Brains guy. And I love that, like, I liked that Lions of Judah and like, like these kinds of bands acknowledged that part of the bad brain shit. Cause I always, if you don't, if the what do reggae we part of hardcore, yeah. the reggae hardcore's reggae history, what do we checkered past? <laughs> what do we say? If you skip the fucking reggae, oh, songs. Yeah. if you skip iron, I survive, put a bullet in your head. <laughs> uh, just put it there. Don't shoot yourself. Um, um, I saw them tour on this and the set was so short. People were asking for more and they were like, we don't have any more songs. So everyone said, well, play him again. And they just played like three of the songs again. That's cool. And it was just as crazy. It was fucking Very, awesome. Uh, Colin of Arabia played that show. Big German energy there. Very German energy. Plays him again. <laughs> Spielen ein Wiener. Um, Youth of Today, Disengage 7-inch, their last release. Uh-huh. The, there's a song called Envy, kind of whatever. Modern Love Story, fine. The song Disengage was written to, as a judge song. Wow. Didn't make the cut. I had no idea. Listen to it through so, that. I know, I know the that, song. Yeah, I through like that lens song. and you go, this is a judge song. Yeah. There's like a wow. build up and like, yeah. Inc- that's why the song fucking rocks. That's so why hard. it rips. Exactly. That's that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Song is incredible. Um, this is one of the first seven inches I even bought when I was a, a, a youngin. Cool, like full color shit. Sammy is... 15 in this picture. Jesus Christ. She's a, a little baby boy. Um, I'll get to another. I'll, I'll, we'll talk more about youth of today in a bit, but the disengaged seven inch fucking awesome. 
Richie playing bass in it at this time. Come on, right. dude. Come on. You know. The God. You the would- king on that note. <laughs> my next pick. And and hear me out here. This is another this is just like that all at war record where a band that's been around for so long ah. comes back yes. with their best songs into another <laughs> omens. Holy shit. Dude. Into Another is a band that doesn't make any fucking sense. Don't make no sense, but somehow I I can't. They're, they're, if I don't do drugs, I'm straight edge, you know? Mm. But Into Another, I might as well. Yeah. If, when I'm listening to Into Another, I'm high. Stoned. <laughs> I'm out of my mind, dude. It's a, re, <laughs> it's a religious experience. Um, and I'll never forget this coming out and us listening to it in the van being like, huh, new into another came out. Can you believe that? Let's listen to it. And then proceeding to listen to it all night. And, and dude, surely expectations were pretty low. When a band uh, comes I back, think, you know. So they did a show. Okay. And it was, uh, they did like the Rev show here. Right. And like Peter Moses was back on guitar. And he was the only, he was the sole guitar player for a long time. So it was like. Peter Moses coming back was like, damn, this is into another. I think they do. Somebody, I think Ryan Downey told me that they had, they do have a new guy who wrote a fair amount, a ton of this, if not all of this. Oh, but it was like, damn, Peter Moses is back. Therefore I'm hopeful to whatever they do next. Yeah. And into another's interpretation of like what they think that they should sound like now was fascinating enough for us to be like, put it on. Let's see what this is. And it is damn. It's this is, this is like number six okay, for, okay, me, okay, maybe, yeah, yeah. for just best EPs. Yeah. Um, Cause to, to exist for this long and have the awareness to be like, no, what if we just did five perfect songs mm. and it's structured as like, here's this, Classic song to open it of like, here's what we sound like. And here's what people know we sound like. Yeah. And then track two to come hard. Big fucking mosh into a big ripping solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know what they're doing. And then they put this big ballad and then another classic into another track and then a big sexy, like sad closer. Mm. It is truly into another omens. A perfect modern piece of yeah. When did, mu- hardcore, when did that come uh, out? Metal mu- 2015. Yeah, it's, that's that is crazy. It's crazy, dude. It it is truly obscenely good, and it just barely doesn't make my top five. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, the singer Richie was in Youth of Today. He sang an underdog. He was involved in in all Legend. of the shit that we've been talking about. So like. Yeah. To continue on and also talk about a guy who like took risks in like vocally performance wise and it oh fucking God. pays off. Like you can't describe into another to someone. No. You have And when to you try to, it. somebody's like, fuck you. Yeah, this I'm this. not listening to that. <laughs> uh and they're wrong. And then they're more for me, you yeah. know? Yeah. More um, more into another for you. <laughs> I got one more honorable mention here. And this is not just okay. me sucking you sideways. Stop. But this, when this came out. Oh, come on, man. When the Preacher Man 7-inch came out. This <laughs> is a perfect 7-inch. So, yeah, Preacher Man, <laughs> Feeder Disease, and a cover. Yeah. That's perfect modern 7-inch. Well, thanks, man. I, 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 I really, truly mean that. That, like, this meant a lot to me. Still does. But, like, that was the thing that made me go, oh, I get what they're doing. Mm. I get it now. I had heard sleep therapy. I didn't quite get it. It was rough it. around I, the edges. You I know, Michael you Hayes know, did. Voice wasn't there. You know? Yeah. I didn't get it. I didn't think it was going to work. Yeah. But then it got me. <laughs> it got, it yeah. got me. It got me good. Well, uh, thanks, man. You know, and you know how I feel about no gods and blind. I, I do. I was just going through my seven inches. Dude, I got, I got all kinds of, I got valley shit here. I oh, got, I got all God. kinds of stuff. Uh, 2000 teamwork records, carry on roll with the punches. Oh my God, dude. At the time, the fastest guitar playing I'd ever heard. <laughs> the fastest music ever recorded. I, I couldn't fucking believe it. 
Yeah. I could not believe it. Um, Todd's right hand is, is, uh, Het esque. Truly, truly like in a league of his own yeah. in this genre of music. I have no argument. He's crazy. Carry on. I've talked about many times before. The LP is one of my favorite things that ever came out of hardcore music. But yeah. this was the first time I heard Carry On. I can literally pick. I would stare at the cover. I thought it was so cool. And it's it's like tattoo flash art. It's not yeah. that crazy, you know, in the grand scheme. What's crazy about Carry On is it is both melodic. Yes. Hardcore. And fuck you, straight edge. So kind of, it's kind of American Nightmare, but with more of the straight edge thing. Yeah. And then, of course, Wes Sang on the LP. Yeah. So for me, as a And guy, then Big Mosh out of nowhere dude, sometimes. Come on, dude. Off my chest. <laughs> dude. Woo! <laughs> Off my chest is so crazy. <laughs> Off my chest as a song is like, you know how in a PG-13 movie you can say fuck one time? One time, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Off My Chest. Oh, oh, you're saying like that's the track? You get every every fast, like melodic straight edge band gets to go jun, jun, jun <laughs> in one song per record. And that was decided by Carry On. And yet. So if you're listening to this and you're going to start a fast melodic straight edge band, you get to go jun, jun, jun one time per record. Dude, don't waste it. Carry On. I, I fucking love Carry On. This is a great hardcore EP, regardless of what came out afterwards. Sure. Great. Yeah, like uh, a perfect record coming out afterwards. Didn't even matter. <laughs> Didn't yeah. even matter. They already... Because they already had it. They already had it. And a ton of the songs are on there. Yep. Um, This, this is a real personal pick for okay. this next one. Disgrace, Songs of Suffering. Dude. That's an EP. Yeah. Fuck. It's perfect. I it, I, I fully agree. I, it, I legitimately thought it was an LP. No, it's six songs, I think. Uh, Great pick. Nobody else in the world, no other like collection of guys could have written these songs. Nope. The mind of Kyle as a guitar player. <laughs> yeah. Like pretty much unrivaled in terms of like in like the modern landscape of guitar players and just terms of like technical ability and how he chooses to apply and it. I don't think because he's so weird. I don't think people know that. No, and it's a shame because he's like not out there playing. Forced Order yeah. obviously came after Disgrace, and that was where he and Mike really put their heads together to be like, what if we just did a hardcore band? Yeah. What would that be yeah. like? And again, those riffs are fucking crazy. Yes. So that makes sense. But Disgrace, Disgrace was yeah. Kyle and Mike writing the craziest songs ever with the goal of writing the craziest songs ever. With Taylor singing with it, dude. I mean, and Taylor like proving himself as like the reluctant, yeah, amazing frontman. Yeah, Gunnels. The man did not want to sing. Gunnels esque. Gunnels esque. Truly, <laughs> uh, sang because he had to because there was no other option. Great pick. Um, I, I have no argument. Great just, pick. just one of one of my favorite bands. Period. I, but like, obviously, I'm biased. I remember before you and I were tight when Disgrace, what was the the fest in Australia? Gold Coast. Gold Coast. Break the ice. Break the ice. Disgrace was playing and there was a video and you're in the background air drumming. Oh my God. My I just remember band. thinking like, oh, that's cool. It's his, you know, his friends, his brother's band. That's nice. I know every single one of them hits that Mike does <laughs> on them drums in every single. I know every single one. Um, I've studied them <laughs> as if they were my own because I felt it was it was those were my guys. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it was, was like my team is doing another. That was twitching tongues without you at yeah, the time. It was literally just me. So when we toured together, it was the ultimate. Yeah, of course. Cheat, cheat code. code yeah. Obviously, suck for them. <laughs> but but no. I would I would do merch for them ah. as the trade of like, you guys are busy. You keep, I'll do this. Do you keep your tips? There were no tips at this time. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> tips are new, dude. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I kept the eight dollars in okay. tips I got at that time. <laughs> now I'm getting be getting I'd be rich. <laughs> um yeah, disgrace songs of suffering truly so good that how is it going to be understood? You know, I, I mean, by these absolute nincompoops that were 
<laughs> running around by that time. I still don't know those songs yeah. that well. You know what I mean? Like I still go, oh fuck, that's right. Like, how did they do? That? How did they do that? Yeah. And just like based on what else was popular at that time? Yeah. Oh, you know, 2012. Nothing sounded like that. No, it was it was it was too smart. It was too good for their own good, truly. But. And like even them playing it for the children last year, the I think they felt like they were Taylor at least was like I feel like I'm trying to present my new band to people and I don't want that to be the goal. Uh, yeah, you know it was like he wanted it to be this special thing of like oh wow they're playing, and those songs are so technical and heavy and insane that moshing to them is almost like. It's like it's too hard to do. There's what there, I can literally think of like the gun 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 gun. That's like the only time where it's like, and even then he they fucking yeah they switch the beat. There's tons of parts. There's you know they, there's there's mosh part. There's a mosh part in every song. I'm saying an, o- an obvious like yeah, but the like time signatures yeah. and the nuances and stuff change so frequently. Dude, if you guys uh, but man, I, there's nothing I like more than getting into a band. That has few releases because it's less daunting, obviously. Yeah. Which is why, like, at the time, like, when I was young, Beyond Age of Quarrel didn't exist, you know, right. as far as we were concerned. So it was like, oh, here's this band with, like, this one perfect record. Yeah. Disgrace has an EP and an LP, and they're fucking... And a split. And a split. And a split, That's right. split with Harness, which both of those songs are on the LP. But there's, some, there's something magical about the, the split versions, you know? There always is. Uh, there really is, man. All right, uh, but I, I, you know, obviously, this is I, this is a deeply personal yeah. pick for me. But man, all right, I got one well, more before top five. Okay, and this one, I was torn between, and you know, this or get an oxygen tank. But I went with mental, get an oxygen tank, bridge nine forty, uh, two thousand three. Which is funny because the the next in, in the top five that I'm sure you and I both are going to have is also in 2003 so it's just like the kind of hardcore that was around at this time yeah was pretty uh, there was a lot on the spectrum there was a lot it was you know it was a spectrum yeah hope con was out mm. an was yeah. out all the lock and out shit was out it was like dark dark hardcore was raining dude dark hc yeah was was ruling the world, but then you had the AN and, and the mental, and then a pair of fucking Nike Dunks smashed through that window. It really and here did, came, man. you know, all of these bands. Um, but yeah, mental. I, I saw mental a bunch around this time. Uh, they played Chicago a lot, and they were fucking. What's Philly to Chicago How, or, or uh, Boston to Boston, Chicago? How long? Sixteen is that hours. It's not even close. No. It's like me playing Seattle. Dude, we were just the only place in between, you know. Louisville is a relatively recent thing. Right. Even Detroit, you know. It, it's just, we were just like I the- I played some fucking stinkers in Detroit. I'll we played one together. Um, <laughs> and it was just, you know. It, oh my God, that one. You remember that one? <laughs> Dude. That was a rough one. That was bottom three of the tour, probably. Yeah, on a, on a, on a rough tour. Yeah. yeah. Holy hell. Um, I think <laughs> anyway. we were just the only the only place. And if you're yeah, going yeah. west or you're going east, like, what are you going to, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they played here a bunch. I saw them at DePaul. DePaul University used to have shows for, like, four years when someone went to college there. And they had so many good fucking shows. Mental was maybe the first, like, mental shirts being a, a rare commodity. Yep. And it being like a marketplace for it, mental shirts yeah. was maybe the first time I was I was aware yeah. of kind of what was going on. I I, in that I world. remember hearing about them having a line during bands at Posse numbers and that being like Oh no. Like How? yeah, that was, was that like controversial. Mean? Yeah. And now, unfortunately, it's normal. It's normal. Yeah. Um, but they were that band at that time where it was like, they got a new shirt. I gotta get it. Yeah. New mental shirt. Yeah. I'll kill myself if I don't own it. Top Are we five. in top five? Yeah. Hit me, dude. And this is any order, right? I know. I have them. You have them in order? I kind of have them in order. I can do it. I can do it. I I, I have a hard number one but and that I think is like the best hardcore EP, period. I know there are two that we're going to have. I know. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Hit me with your, hit me with five. Okay. 
Grimlock thirst for immortality. It's the reason yep. we're talking right now. Yep. It is the it is the sole reason that this show exists at the end of the day. You know, the first domino, first domino that led me to Bo, that led Hard Lord to, to to be on your fucking YouTube screen or on your in your ears right now. Hmm. Uh, I heard the bell for Mountain of Power with Taylor Young in a car, in the back seat of a car together. And it didn't matter that it wasn't like the cleanest. This was the, at this point in my life, as a literal child, this is the least polished music I'd ever heard. Yeah. Might as well have been but noise. All, Harsh. It noise. might as well have been noise, but all I knew is it was going, gin, 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 gin. And I knew, <laughs> and Taylor knew, whatever that just was that we heard is all we want. Mm. So, Aaron Young, please show us more. And Aaron would be like, I don't listen to that. Here's some other things that my friends left behind. Uh, and then Taylor started his voyage of discovering things, and I got I got what was left behind yeah. and what was shared with me by him. But this was it. This Thirst for Immortality was the thing that, that led us on this path. Beautiful. I love that. I can, I can, I'll do that now. The, the only official EP that wasn't a single release by a band I know you and I both love was The Misfits, Beware. Ah, wow. Which is, it's technically a comp, but mm. it's an EP. It's got We Are 138, Bullet, Hollywood Babylon, Attitude, Horror Business, Teenagers from Mars, Last Caress. <laughs> Those are like the best punk songs ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. Like period. Yeah. Literally ever. Who, this was. Who, how can you even argue that? Plan 9, 1980. And these were all re-recorded. Oh my God, dude. They're, they're it, dude. Yeah. The, the That's Misfits, the best punk band ever. Uh, they're, they're fucking it. And uh, this is obviously a Holy bootleg. Shit. Uh, a certain record store yeah. I go to puts out these like unnamed bootlegs. It's really funny. Like that didn't happen. <laughs> um. But look how little the seven inch. Look how little the like amount of music oh. there is. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. It's the, the white part is so big. Huge. The label is not- huge. Wow. Um, That's awesome. It's technically the only EP. It's a comp, whatever. You know, they were doing what they had to do. This is before Doyle was even in the band. This is Bobby Steele. All right. Um, I love the Misfits. Big domino band for me. It mm-hmm. probably legitimately goes <laughs> Blink-182, Misfits. And that is kind of what started. Because they they were doing everything else. They There is a, a letter that was on Misfits Central, because I used to fucking obsess over it, where he sends Walk Among Us to Al Barrill from SSD and says, share this with all the boys, meaning like uh, all the Boston dudes. Yeah. And being the fucking mark that I am for that kind of shit, that, you know. It all that just ties in. Put the whole perspective in. It me. all ties uh, in for me. So, Misfits and Danzig were were a Nate Lavelt put me on to type thing. Really? Where it was like I got into them backwards because I showed him typo, and he's like, "Just so you know, you like Danzig." And it was like, I, I don't want. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I've tried, man. I've heard Mother. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then her black wings. Cha- like I was. It was like, this is the best music I've ever heard. That's my favorite dancing song. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I go back further, and I'm like, okay, well, where is, where's the DNA of this come from? And like Sam Hain, a couple tracks. A couple tracks, for sure. Those tracks are amazing. Yeah. But a couple. You get it. You get it. Yeah. And then just every Misfits song is good. That's so surprising to me that you like the Misfits. It, I think they're the best, the best punk band. They are. It, it just doesn't make it, it doesn't track. But but think about this. Uh-huh. I'm like, I've, my house is decorated for Halloween already. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it's you. It's September 4th. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. The lyrics are so stupid and insane and awesome. Mm-hmm. The songs are still aggressive. Still aggressive. The melodies. I mean, that's. Are groundbreaking and and like, you remember every single one? Every single one. They had no idea what they were doing or what they had, and yet they did it. There's a few 
people who I consider like um, alternative musical geniuses. Yeah. Who like, they didn't just stumble on something. They like repeatedly did it. Danzig's yeah. one. Um, Peter Steele. Yeah, he one. reinvented himself t- five, three times. Yeah. And, and he, like found greater success. Pioneered each something each time. And then did a reunion with his first band that made more money than surely any other punk band has ever made at once. Ever. Peter Steele's one of them. Trent Reznor, I would say, is probably one of them. Sure. I mean, Trent Reznor, the film score composer, that's my dog. <laughs> I take, I'll take the social network score over any. Any. Nine nine just nine Period. Um, but yeah, the misfits are, are so important to me. That's a Chris Mills put me on to thing for sure. Mm. Um, uh, Chris Mills and my friend Tom DeLong, but yeah, oh, misfits sure. beware. That's my number five. Very good. Very nice. Uh, my number four would be stigmata. Hymns for an Unknown God. That's an EP. Yeah. Fuck. It's long. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. T- it's like, it's probably 30 minutes, <laughs> but it's seven songs. And you're giving you me know? shit over dropping many suckers. Yeah, but it's seven songs, you know? <laughs> if it's a CD, it, you, when you, if you buy a seven song CD, you'd be like, I just bought the new CD EP from Stigmata. True. The, 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 the point in my life in which I found this to this day, I say is like, this is the thing that I found. Uh, Taylor showed me just damn near everything else. But you. I found Stigmata. Gotcha. For me, it was like, I I had this secret thing that was like, damn, nobody know, nobody I know listens to this. Dude, and that tracks so well for you too, because there's some <laughs> there's some melody in there. Yeah. And it's ha- it's very hard. The solos are like. Good. How, how are they doing? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What is this, where did this come from? Yeah. Playing a solo over, like, the mosh section of the song, Mm -hmm. where you're like, oh, the whole part, the whole three-minute opening track leads to a solo, Mm -hmm. and that's where you're going? Mm -hmm. Um, Production produced by Harley Flanagan? Is that true? Yes, dude. I didn't know that. It's fucking awesome. I didn't know that. And who knows what that actually means? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But he's got producer credits? He's got production credit. He's got produced by Harley Flanagan credit. Um like, I if and I've, I'm, I think I've said this on the show several times now. But if you Google "Hymns for an Unknown God" lyrics, you'll see that I submitted them wherever they are. I typed them up from the booklet, really, and and sent them in. <laughs> uh, so this is this is Im- important music to me, just because it, it it like affirmed me on my journey of like, okay, I there's things out there for me to discover. And like the feeling of sharing that with Taylor of being like, dude, I found something. Like I, I, I finally make me understand how he maybe felt that whole time. Gotcha. Of being my old head and being like, listen to this, 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 and this. There you go. Where I had a thing to be like, oh, did he? Did he? Uh, was there any resistance, or was he just like, no, you did it. No. Yeah, he was definitely just like. <laughs> that's awesome. Where the fuck was this? Yeah. And I think that's that's. That's how I felt too, in the sense of like, what else is out there? Mm-hmm. How and how do I find it? Mm-hmm. How do I start finding? It? I wish Hard Lord existed. Yeah, exactly. God, I was just gonna say. Now, now you got this. Jesus Christ! All right, number four for me. We're going. We're going way back. We're going back to Boston. I'm shipping off to Boston. Ship it up. Dropkick Murphys. You're gonna put that. On no. Uh, <laughs> before Slapshot was Negative Effects. Before Negative mm. Effects was. Last Rites. Mm. Last Rites put out one record. Last Rites played <sighs> one show. Wow. The record has two songs. <laughs> this this release has two songs. There was a, a later on, like, kind of a comp thing. Chunks and So Ends Our Night. Chunks might be the hardest punk-sounding song, and So Ends Our Night has the Coca-Cola, we don't drink no booze, no way line. Yeah. And the song is all about, like, we went out looking for trouble and we didn't find anything. So we're just going to hang out. Like it's literally Drink about soda? like, we went out looking for a fight. Didn't find anything. Oh, well let's get some sodas. Let's, let's get boys. some Coke, some Coca-Cola. <laughs> Sold. You know what I mean? It's it's chunks. Chunks may be the most like top five covered song I've ever seen. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And I, and I'm not going to lie. They covered it out of this is hardcore and, or covered it. Slapshot played it. Yeah. And, I was, I was very happy because I got yeah. to see him sing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
But dude, it's fucking hard. If you look up Last Rites, there's a regrettable album cover with a certain dictator. <laughs> sure. Um, but that was just the a band punk name's thing. amazing. The band name is incredible. Yeah. And and the other record cover is him with the hockey stick shirtless. And it just it's everything I like about that style of hardcore at the time. Sure. Um, Last Rites, Tang Records, 1984. Wow. Enough said. Two songs. Two songs. That's so crazy. On the chunks. So it's literally called Chunks So Ends Our Night 7 Inch. That's the name of the Oh, uh, it's like a, yeah. That's it. That's awesome. Uh, my number three, Bo. You're going to do it to Slayer, me. Slayer, Hello Waits. Wow. That's an EP, EP, dude. Think about it. What is that? Seven songs? I never realized that was an EP. <laughs> Hello Waits, dude. The fucking. Dude. Do you know a single person who heard this as like a child or a teenager and wasn't immediately different after? I heard a band from here called Left Hand Path, or maybe it was Undo Tomorrow. They're kind of the same band. Andrew Morrissey was in both. Heard them open with it when I was pure youth crew, like full. This is when Double Cross was playing. We played the same yeah. show. And I was like, what is that? They played that what? and Among the Living by Anthrax. Oh, and I was like, "That's awesome. what is this? <laughs> I need to know what that is. And they were like, oh, yeah. this is Slayer. And I was like, I know South of Heaven and I know Raining yeah. Blood. This is that? And it, No. So to answer your question, no. And I, it's a, it, I, is, it is life affirming, life altering, straight up metal music. I had no Reading, fucking idea that was an EP. Yeah. Wow. And there's no there's no Metal Blade Records today without this, for sure. Mm -mm. I would say Hello Wait's probably the reason we were like, yeah, we'll sign a Metal Blade. Oh, nice. This and Cannibal Corpse and Google Dolls for King us. Diamond. You know? Yeah. Google <laughs> Dolls for us for sure. That's a great pick. That's a great <sighs> pick. Strong. <laughs> also, like this the the line between this and the hardcore music that I like and write yeah. is very thin too. We're all just going. Da, 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 da. That's yeah, yeah, Marauder, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, dude. Hello, Waits is Marauder. Holy shit! Very well put. Hello, Waits is that. is take by force. Like it's yeah. literally the same monochromatic kind of riff. The same. It's the same scale. Same notes. Very. We're good. all doing Hello, Waits. Very. Good. <laughs> If you're doing Marauder, you're doing Hell Waits. And Lord knows I'm doing Marauder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three for me. And I know this is on yours, so let's just say it. We're going to do it together. Sure. Lowest of the low, terror. So here's the thing, man. Ah, oh, come on. I don't, I've never in my life considered it an EP. I thought it was an EP until I became aware a while ago, years ago that it yeah. was in fact in an EP. And the reason that I know that, and I know you're going to hate this, I had a 10 inch version of it. Sure. Hate a 10 inch. I know you do, but I had a it's European 16 minutes ten long. Yeah, yeah. And I, and let me tell you, Bo, I didn't look up nothing and I know it's 16 minutes long. Very well, very well put. <laughs> Nine tracks, 16 minutes. Perfect. Perfect. Oh my God. We've talked. It is EP or not. Yeah. It's one of the, it is, it like, if I could be the best hardcore record ever. It, I think it is. I think it's lit legitimately dropping many suckers in this. Wow. Like those are the, the, well, I'm saying EPs, but I think that like, I think, I think I get in on a technicality here and I'm fine with that. Hmm. It is fucking perfect. It is absolutely perfect. It is a genre. It is a perfect collection thing. of hardcore songs by Arguably the best hardcore band to ever exist. It's a genre defining thing. It's kind of a, a city defining thing. Oh, like dude. a coastal defining. You know what I mean? Oh, like we're dude. talking. Because think about what California hardcore was before this. Throw it was down. melodic punk. And like throw down and yeah. strife. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's I never identified with either of those as like. That's a my thing. That's your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Terror is. Like you said in the liner notes, recorded in the fucking valley. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I could cry right now. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, I I don't think 
there's any argument for like mm-hmm. the impact that they've had, the longevity that they've so wisely crafted for themselves. Yeah. You want to talk about road dogging? <laughs> you want to talk about still going and still writing? There's a, there's a song on every LP mm. that could be argued is their best song. Ooh. Every time. I love it. They just keep doing it. I, I It's the only one on my list written in all caps. Bridge Nine Records, 34, the year of 2003. One year after the demo. Think about that. Yeah, that's amazing. That's... Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, Todd Jones has a, a thread in a lot of my favorite things. Yeah. <laughs> like, period. He's a, he's a, he is a, a hardcore songwriting god. And this is when I, I fully became aware of him. Hmm. As like, oh, that's that guy. Like, that, this yeah. is because he was in the line. He's on the back yelling, not into a mic, which Just I thought yell. was really fucking cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I obviously I've I found Terror before Buried Alive or anything else that Scott had done. So it was my intro to like him and like that's a whole other conversation. It's like his yeah. fucking impact and what he's done. So can't believe it. I think it counts as an EP. I'm taking it. I you know, what whatever it is, they're the best hardcore band ever. <laughs> whatever low is the low is, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> it's a perfect thing. Okay. <laughs> Period. My number two. Hate breed under the knife. Wow. Yeah. Is this on your top? Is this in your top five? I, this was the, this was the last one where I was like, I know I don't have to write this down. I oh, know yeah. it's going to be in his. I mean, again, these are life changing songs. Period. I mean, we talked to Jamie. You heard that "Not One Truth" was the first song. Fucking hell, dude. And it's, and it's just a thing you read in a museum. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, that's pretty cool. I think I'll make a career out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, you know what's crazy? Uh, the craziest thing about Hatebreed maybe mm. is the simplicity of some of the songs, but the like the brilliant simplicity in them in that nobody really has ever sounded like Hatebreed. Like that they were the first to sound like that? Yeah. Well, even to this day, I don't think, like, obviously you can be like, oh, this is influenced by Hatebreed. But you can't really sound like Hatebreed. No. You can try. You can basically. But it just sounds wrong. You can just, like, reverse engineer their riffs. Yeah. And that's it, the only way. And that's the only and, way. And then and then you'll it'll be too on the nose. Like, there, exactly. it's that. Yeah. I, I totally agree. True pioneers. Um I would argue that they're like the biggest hardcore band of all time until maybe Turnstile. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for great reason, man, they, they, they engineered the band to be a successful entity. They like a, like a Danzig mm. in, in the context of the band reinvent, reinvent themselves with the times in a way that doesn't compromise the band and what it sounds like entirely. Wow. Cause they still like you put on a new record on, it sounds like Hapri. Yeah. It'll sound like a modern interpretation of it with, you know, modern production and it's yeah. cleaner, Yeah, but it's still sad. It's still there because Jamie's writing is, is so Jamie's writing at the end of the day. I would say not to backtrack, but that also could be said for terror too. Yeah. They're putting Which out is a interesting song. Cause there's been different guys, right? Exactly. They're, but, but, but Nick, Nick is the, is Nick is the steady thread yeah. and dude, Nick is, Nick is a legit, like brilliant hardcore punk musician. It, I mean, but putting out, putting out a song with corpse grinder. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like, like that kind of shit where it's like, you can reinvent, you can re, um, Redisplay yourself almost, yeah. and and then Haybreed, very similar to to Terra too, doing tours that are kind of out there, kind of eclectic, kind of not in the normal wheelhouse that you would think, right? But it works. Well, Haybreed can be can be direct to support to anybody, to literally any band. They could they could be a direct support to the Devil Wears Prada to fu- I mean, Alice to fucking Chains, Bring Me the Horizon, Pantera, you know? yeah. 
Yeah. Pantera. Yeah. And then they could bring anybody on tour and it makes sense. And they, they do be bringing <laughs> some crazy mixes of bands on tour that work. They're really, they're this like magical thread that binds all spectrums of extreme music. It's so Cause sick. like you said, Eric Rutan mm-hmm. listened to perseverance for a year when it came out. Yep. I guarantee you the bring me the horizon motherfuckers has been kicked to perseverance before. Here's my number two. And I'm, if you're down to your last one, this, and this isn't it, I'm like truly shocked. But maybe it's because you're a later record guy of this band. AFI, All Hollows EP. So this is the one I didn't say earlier. Okay. Because Perfect. I knew it would be on. This is. Uh, I don't know if there's more of a second for second, more perfect collection of noise. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It is. It is perfect. Yeah. Uh, Nitro Records, October 1999. Nitro Records. That's the that's the homie uh, homie offspring, right? I believe so. Yeah. Um, Asshole. I was this the um, first. Did Jade play on Black Sails? Yeah, he did play on Black Sails. Yeah. Okay. So never mind. He did, right? I. I'm looking at it now. Guitar. Yeah, he did. Okay. I'm just making sure. I didn't want to say it was the first thing he played guitar on, but, right. it, but for me, it's like the first, like in black sales, you can hear the like AFI chord, the like, mm-hmm. bang, it's kind of like a, a bar chord minor. Like you can hear it. Yeah. This was the first time where it was like, what if we take, we strum that chord and we write a whole EP, well, three songs with a cover based around each individual note, like in that chord. Cause every yeah. song kind of does it. There's a music video for total immortal where they just painted their practice space black and have pumpkins lit up and film it in black and white. Davey looks fucking insane. Yeah. He looks like a monster. The songs are perfect. The boy who destroyed the world might be my favorite song on the thing. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> it was on fucking Tony Hawk. Like, yeah, they cover the misfits. They wear cover their, the misfits. They they really took that. That's theirs. That's theirs. They they their wore song. their influence so hard on their sleeve on that. And it's such Which a I love. And and as we were talking about before, it's a perfect little stepping stone to before art of drop or art of drop. Yeah. yeah. It's like even from the artwork to the sound. I don't know if it was recorded at the same time or not. Whatever. It's a perfect use of what an EP is. No, hundred percent. It's like, Hey, this is, by the way, this is what we are now. This is where we're going. Yeah. Uh, and here's like a real perfect presentation of songs. Dude, this thing's crazy. This, I feel like this maybe would have been in my top five had I not known it was one or two for you. Um, but man, uh, finding this was another thing where I felt like I struck gold. It was like, this is AFI. Yeah. Because yeah. I found it after hearing Sing the Sorrow. Really? Because I heard Sing the Sorrow first. I was, when it came out, I was what? Yeah. 12, 13? It makes perfect sense. So I went back to this and it was like, damn, they're just a, like a fast punk band, mm-hmm. but they're still doing these big sexy choruses. Yeah. Also, sing along. I'm a sucker for. In, so in, it, there's a th- the kind of a thin line between when the, uh, the woe, basically using a woe uh-huh. as like the part of the song is like we're building to this woe, woe, which can suck. It can fall flat. Can suck, man. It can it can be some pre-terror California bullshit, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. where I just don't care. Yep. AFI did it in this way that is like, the word spooky has become so derogatory now, <laughs> but I'm all about it. But, but I mean, you, we, yes, it's become The time and place here, you know what yeah. you're getting into with the All Hallows EP. Came out and October. They, the fact that they were able to keep that going yeah. for this whole little thing, completely front to back, aesthetically, sonically, Dude, this thing rocks. It is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Fall Agreed. Children, Total Immortal, Boy Who Destroyed the World, Halloween, the cover. Incredible. Samples in between each song. Yeah. Weird, creepy, like, noise box shit and, like, thunderstorms. It, it's just, like, everything about it is perfect. The, I, 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 I truly, like, Chris Mills is a huge AFI guy. 
yeah. he got me into a- into AFI and into the Misfits, which is like there's a, a domino. So it's truly it's Chris, like I said, Chris and Tom DeLonge. Um, <laughs> the old heads. Those are my old heads, and <laughs> I so I knew about um, before I knew about pre All Hallows, you know. Mm. And then kind of discovered it at, shortly thereafter because I got into it probably 2000. It came out in 90, mm. October 99. So it's like wow. right there. It was a new record. It was a relatively new record. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it just it was immediate. And, and that was the, around the time too where you could find shit on Kazaa or LimeWire. Yeah. So, so you, the four, uh, four songs on Kazaa, you know, might have taken you eight hours to download them. I mean, but you can listen to four fucking songs. Yeah. And you're going to finish those four songs and be like, I got to hear those I'm again. Playing, I'm, I'm learning them. I learned how to yeah. play Fall Children immediately. I learned how to play God Called In Sick Today immediately, you know, when that record came out. Uh, just That's one of my warm-up riffs. It's a fun one. Yeah. Uh, I, wow. Cool song. I, I, I can't say enough about it. It's just perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, they're... One of the best bands, period. <laughs> period. Uh, my number one, Bo. The best hardcore EP of all time. Oh. And I'm I'm kind of saying this to... I don't know if this is subjective anymore. <laughs> okay. If it's not... I think this is the best hardcore EP, period. Not under the knife. I'm very... Breakdown uh, Blacklist. Black. Oh, perfect. Great. There was a point when I was talking about New York bands, I was like, fuck, if we don't mention Breakdown... It's number one. We're it's the best posers. one ever. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Again, production. Crazy. Songs. Lyrics. The motherfucker's singing about Big Macs, Bo. He's watching a street fight eating a Big Mac. That's all I want. Think about me hearing that. Eating what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> it, I spit, spit out, out my Big, Big Mac because I couldn't yeah. believe what he said. Yeah. I don't think this is on streaming, right? I don't believe so. Dude. Stop what you're doing. Stop listening to this. Go and find a way. YouTube. It's to on download YouTube it for sure. What? It's on YouTube for sure. Okay, look it up on YouTube. Breakdown blacklisted full LP. Listen to the whole thing. Street fight and jail depression. Good God, dude! Two two of the greatest hardcore songs ever written. But front to back, this entire record is sonic hardcore perfection. The band's called Breakdown. Breakdown, dude. What else? What, do you need more? Also, in the first song, Blacklisted, title track, he says, break down Blacklisted as an actual lyric in the song. That's fucking all I ever wanted. That came out 97. Yeah. Pretty crazy I, that, like, Division One Champs 96. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Eyeball Records 1997. That's fucking crazy. It is the best hardcore EP ever written. Period. Outstanding. And a sentence. I don't think that that is an opinion. I think it's a fact. <laughs> like if you if if you define what an EP is and what it should be and what it could be. Yeah. And and especially if you're factoring in like production and the way it sounds. It sounds awesome. It sounds modern, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. not in a shitty way, yeah. you know? Bands would in like pay a, a lot of money to sound like that today. Straight up, yeah. and they don't get it. <laughs> it don't happen. Don't do it. Because this is a magic thing. This is Mike Dijon at his best. What did he Again. go on to, to, to be in? Crown of, well, Crown of Thorns was before this. Both Train Our Blues and Mentally Vexed are before this. Mike Dijon. Yeah. Maybe like to me, in terms of what I've what I've listed here, could could possibly be the hardcore riffer of all time. Wow. So, Mike Dijon, if, if you're listening, put that in your back pocket, take it with you, <laughs> hold it up with pride. Breakdown blacklisted, the greatest hardcore EP of all time. I've got my number one. And I see a 12 inch. So this is only because the original is fucking a billion dollars. So I got yeah, a, sure. a re-release that added another song and they bumped it up to a 12 inch. Youth of today can't close my eyes to the <laughs> surprise of no one. But 
there's there, there, here's what's cool about it. It's 1985, which is fucking crazy. That's absolutely insane. The Can't Close My Eyes EP came out on Positive Force Records, which was Kevin Second's record label. Wow. So they were huge. So there's a great story. They were on tour together. I th- I don't know if it was Youth Today yet or if it was um if they were still Violent Children was like their first band, but they they played they played a couple shows with 7 Seconds. The other guys in 7 Seconds like got high or whatever. And Kevin was he, I don't think he ever called himself straight edge, but he was clean. Kevin Seconds is one of the funniest nicknames of all time. That's yeah, amazing. And <laughs> they were all bummed on that. And I, I, I'm going to fuck up which band it was, but he said, why don't you guys, Ray and Porcel, ride with me to the next show? And they just listened to either a Misfits record that had just come out on tape or some, some record together. They listened to it together and like drove together. And that's where they decided, let's put out a record together. Kind of a thing. So this one is, it's kind of a comp. It's kind of like a collection of a bunch of their songs, but like, you're not going to be able to see it because of my green screen, but Ray has a shirt on with just an X spray painted on his chest. 1985. So is this, this is considered an EP? Can't yes. Close my eyes? Can't Close My Eyes was an EP. This okay. is like a repress that came out on Rev much later. Um, that added extra songs to it, but it's the original EP first and it's got all the heavy hits and it's just Mm -hmm. like, it was the beginning of what would go on to be all the shit that I love. Sure. So it's just, and it, it, I, I've said this before. It sounds, it's so fast and so fucking crazy sounding that it's borderline power violence (laughs) and it's 85 and it's 85. It's got to do that. that. It's got the shit. I like, it's all about straight edge. It's got We Just Might on it. It's like everything that I love about that era. Yeah, that's Bo personified. It, all of it is on Can't Close My Eyes. I saw, and, and just like a tie back into like one of my later things, I saw a mental cover Can't Close My Eyes at like a last minute basement show. So it was like, there was all this through, all this um, um, threading back to this shit. And there's X's all over this shit. It was, it was made mm. for me. Made. Love that. He's wearing an SSD control shirt. It's it's just made for me. So that was, I mean, you now have the listener have like fifty something EPs to to seek out. This is gonna be a crazy Spotify playlist yeah, how if gonna, any of these songs. How are we gonna do it? <laughs> you know, we'll see if we even can. We'll do what we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was fun. Um I love doing stuff like this because it I think it not only shows people's shit to check out if they might not know it. But you yeah. and I have such different answers. We do. I, you know, I definitely wish I knew just more information about all these things to share when I share them. Mm-hmm. But if anything, it's just it's just fuel for you to look it up mm-hmm. and find some things to share with us. Because mm-hmm. there's no hard there was no hard lore when we were kids. We had to find all this shit ourselves. Yeah, it was Bridge Nine lore, <sighs> which was dark and seedy <laughs> and dangerous. Uh, but those are those are our picks for the our, the best hardcore and and you know et cetera EPs of all time. I think we did about twenty each total. Yeah, because I you know couldn't we repeated some. Yeah, that we had we both had some, so that makes sense. Yeah, it's still there's a lot of shit. There's a lot. I, I listen to all of this to this day. You yeah, know? dude. Some of it, admittedly, not in a minute, but like fucking. AFI terror. Yeah. And this is this entire list was just me taking notes off the top of my head based on things I still listen to. <laughs> so, yeah. And I heard some of this when I was 10 years old. That's crazy. So this this if you're finding some of this today, it could stick with you for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if you're an older guy, you're listening to this and you want to shoot us in the head, that's fine. It's fine. But it's our show. <laughs> and we get to do what we want. I have a and microphone. These are our favorite DPs of all time. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. We love you so much. Bye. Bye.